Hello and welcome you all watching and those who will watch the recording of today's Corvinus Masters Open Day. We are so excited for each and every one of you uh, joining us today. Our first presentation will be about the application process, focusing on mainly the felvi.agu Hungarian application platform. We will also provide some information for those interested in the, app, in the um, international application process as well. You will have the opportunity to ask questions during the event in the comment sections of Facebook and YouTube as well. After the introdu introductory presentation, you can join the presentations about the varied programs that we can offer. Uh, you can learn about the unique features, scientific focus and uh, potential career paths of uh, each and every one of our offered programs. Feel free to ask questions and actively participate in these uh, sessions. So now let just our uh, programs begin. Uh, and as I mentioned before, our first presentation will be about the admission process held by Daniel Hovran, Dean for Graduate Programs. So thank you, Chanel, uh, to give the floor to me. So welcome, everyone. This is the uh, online uh, open online day for today, and this is our second day. And I think that we spent a good time uh, yesterday uh, with with uh, my colleagues. And uh, let's just continue with a couple of master programs, and let's just repeat the first part which is uh, about the procedure ad of admission. Uh, I'm responsible for the graduate programs and in the name of that, I would like to give you some information, how to plan, how to uh, uh, plan your admission and how to uh, uh, proceed all the things around that. Um, so welcome everyone, um, we have 20 plus master programs in the year of 2024. Uh, and among of that, we have four one year programs. And I'm gonna just talk about uh, in my short presentation uh, about the process through felvi.hu. So uh, I'm gonna talk about the whole story. I'm gonna talk about, uh, uh, give some more hints, give some hints. And uh, if I may miss something, if I miss something, then you can ask uh, felvi.corvinus uh, uh, email address. So let's uh, jump into the details. So usually I'm not just a dean, I also teach. And uh, during that, the, the first day, I usually show a timeline of the student for the students. And this is that I just want to do right now as well. So uh, let's consider the next semester or the next, next half year and let's plan how to apply for Corvinus to the to any master programs. So what you can see on the left side that uh, uh, the, the application on felvi.hu uh, started in, in the first, uh, 21st, first, 21st of December and uh, uh, there is a, uh, the, the, one of the most important deadline is the mid of February, 15th of February, when the application closes on felvi.hu. And uh, what you have this point is just you need to register, you need to apply for one or, one or, other, or more master programs at Corvinus. And what happens next? You can see a bunch of uh, dates, but uh, you will understand that uh, actually it's not uh, 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 very much, it's not so complicated. So let's just uh, have a look on 1st of March. According to this, the start of credit approval process, this is the start of, of the credit approval process. What do I mean on credit approval process? Um, it may happen that you are gonna go from, so you, you are going from a, a bachelor program, which not which is not entirely uh, fit to, which not which does not entirely fit to your master program, 
And in this case, you need to fulfill, you need to uh, complement your, your knowledge. And uh, we need to investigate this knowledge. Uh, we can uh, recognize your former skill set. And uh, um, in some cases, we need to investigate it further. And we, in some cases, we also uh, require one or two extra courses to take uh, in the first year of the master program. Uh, I'm going to talk about it later, but you need to submit your transcript usually in, uh, during uh, this time. And you can also see that it, it is starting at the first of in the 1st of March and it ends at the, 20, uh, at the 27th of May. So um, it takes a long period. What is in between? Uh, so this is the second. So the first important deadline is the application deadline. The second important deadline is the credit. Uh, sorry, uh, the credit approval procedure is holding is, is taking uh, duration is longer. So you have time uh, till to do it uh, uh, to June. So the next important deadline after the credit approval process is uh, 15th of April, uh, because this is the institutional deadline uh, for uh, submitting your uh, transcripts and submitting your results on international tests. Um, is it a strict deadline? In some terms, yes, but in some terms, no. So it has some flexibility. Let me explain it. So, uh, if you have a, uh, if you finish your bachelor or, uh, or higher education diploma, uh, then and you submit it to the mid of April, that we can entirely evaluate your results, and then uh, we can. Con if you have a high grade, uh, you are coming from Corvinus, or you are coming from a university which has ACSB or EFMD accreditation, uh, and you have at least a good grade, then um, we will offer 75 points for, the, for that, and it's technically enough for, uh, for being admitted and, and getting Corvinus scholarship. Um, if you don't have this, uh, but you are expecting to finish till uh, July, then it's still okay because you can complement and you can submit all of the documents uh, till 10th of July. Uh, this is the end of the extension period for the missing documents. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if you are not from these institutions, but you are also come, would like to go and you would like to do, uh, 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 would like to apply, then uh, you can make an international test. And uh, if you have this and you have the score, you should submit it uh, till the middle of April as well. It means if you have a good score that you are also, uh, we are also can offer uh, a high, uh, uh, we are also can offer the scholarship and the eligibility. So uh, it's a good way to continue. What happens if you don't have the results, uh, you don't have the grades, or you don't have the test result? In some cases, in some programs, we offer oral. Uh, interviews as well. This will hold, this period will hold uh, between 27th of May and 30, 31st of May. Uh, during the interviews, we can ask personal questions, but we also ask theory questions. And uh, it's, uh, we have a difference because formerly it was uh, really a part of the, of the procedure. Now, uh, if you have a good grade, a good enough, uh, a good test that uh, you cannot, and you provided it, that you you don't need to to take the exam. Uh, it's a kind of makeup exam in this sense, so you can a bit uh, 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 you can get extra ten points if 
you are doing well on the, in the exam, in this or interview. Um, so when it is finished, then after that, uh, you can see the next deadline, which is 19th of June. So this is the end of the credit approval procedure. Then you also know that uh, uh, all of the credits, all of the all subjects you learned before is good uh, to continue in the master program. In, the, in master programs and then um, the most important maybe the most important deadline is 10th of July why because the 10th of July is the final deadline for completing the international test and submit your test score uh, uh, and this is the final deadline to to submit all of your transcript and all of your grades and diploma so once you have uh, a, a good doc the, the, uh, the appropriate document to this time that you can uh, uh, join to a master program and uh, um, the 24th of july is uh, the day of the announcement when we uh, make it official or at least well publish uh, the thresholds for for application. So let's go uh, a little bit through about the three points, which is uh, really interesting. Uh, what is the credit approval process? How do you how do you imagine it? So there are four categories. If you are coming from an undergraduate program and you're gonna go for the graduate program, then uh, your undergraduate program can uh, be one of the four categories. We can characterize them uh, one of the four categories. One is that there, when we don't need it is not the, the credit approval is not needed. Usually, it's uh, very common if you go from a bachelor and you go for the same or very similar master. Uh, the other one is that the credit approval is needed, but uh, you don't need to do, take extra courses. So in this picture on the right side, you can see them uh, with the golden uh, uh, lines. And then uh, there are uh, the third case, that is the third, the third case is about credit approval is needed. And uh, uh, we suggest to take one or two extra courses during the first year. So it's not so complicated, it's doable usually. Uh, and uh, it is shown in the picture in uh, with yellow. And there are some programs from where application is not possible in the direct way. So you may somehow learn more for for, for uh, applying the program. Let's just uh, go through the international test side. Um, from this year, and this is maybe the most important information, from this year uh, we, have, we don't have any written institutional entrance exam. Instead of that, uh, the applicants uh, have to uh, take uh, international tests like GMAT focused edition and MAT and GRE tests, one of that, uh, one of them. GMAT and NMAT is offered by the Graduate Management Admission Council. GRE is offered by ETS. Uh, the university will advertise uh, them and we give some we give some hints and information. So on 5th of February, we will have a, an online information session about understanding and preparing for the GMAT focused edition exam. And on 8th of February, we offer uh, other information for the NMAT exam. Uh, and after that, in March, we also will offer on-site preparatory, an on-site preparatory mini course for carrying out, especially the NMAT exam. Um, my personal hints are, please take the exam before mid of April, and don't worry if you uh, have a not if you have essentially a poorer score, because you can repeat it at least two times, you can repeat it two times, and uh, it's enough to submit it 10th of July. 
Uh, I would say that NMEST is less expensive. So if you consider some budget, if you have some budget consideration, I would choose that one. GMAT and GRE test are, uh, uh, they hold uh, for a longer period. So it can be usual for, uh, it could be useful later on if you want to use it in the future that I would choose this one. Um, uh, the recommended length of the prepara of preparation is six weeks. So just uh, uh, please design your preparation time. And if you can get online tests uh, that offered by these uh, test centers, because they are extremely useful. Um, finally, I have to mention that uh, we highly appreciate if you reach uh, uh, scores on the international test and we will transform these points to uh, the standard university point system of LV point system you uh, between 0 and 90 and you must have a minimum and in term of the FELV system the FELV score system uh, you must have a minimum score of 65 points to be eligible for admission and 75 points to be eligible for receiving a Colbury scholarship. Uh, I have to just repeat myself that uh, with a Corvinus uh, grade or an ACSB or, an, or a grade from any ACSB or EFMD school, uh, you also, uh, give, we will also offer 75 points, which is technically the eligibility for the Corvinus scholarship. And for those programs who have oral interviews, it means if uh, um, if you reach a score between 65 and 75, then uh, you wish and you should uh, make uh, make up your points. And with this procedure, you can get extra 10 points. So it just... Uh, um, if you want to go for the scholarship, it helps you. Uh, these rules uh, above uh, do not apply for the SEMS MBA and uh, economy, uh, teacher of economics courses because they are, are under different regulations. Uh, so these are the programs that uh, require our interviews, but in this sense, and uh, uh, this is the last uh, slide of mine. Uh, let us just consider and uh, sum up with the timeline once again. So please note that the mid of February is the deadline for the application. Mid of, mid of April is the deadline to submit your grades or test scores. Uh, don't worry if it, something is happened that uh, during that time you can do the makeup and till 10th of July you should complete uh, all your submissions uh, and then you can wait for the results till uh, 24th of July. So that's it. Uh, I think uh, I think that uh, you will be a successful applicant and uh, I wish the best all for you. Thank you, Dania, for the in-depth admission information and your presentation as well. Please welcome our next presenter, who will be Matt Jensen, Head of International Student Recruitment and Admissions. He will be presenting about the admission process for international students. Thank you, Chanat. Thank you, Donnie. So I'm going to take over from where Donnie left off. Uh, I am the Director of International Student Recruitment. Just a very, very quick introduction. I'm from the, the UK. I think people normally guess this uh, pretty quickly after they hear me speak. I've worked in higher education for over 11 years now, uh, always doing international student recruitment, marketing and admissions. Very, very nice environment to work in. I really love working with, with international students and, and meeting uh, talented young people who look to learn, like hopefully uh, many of you are who, are who are joining us today. Um, been three years in, in Hungary. Before that, I was eight years in the UK doing this work. So I'm going to guide you through now uh, the international students, specifically how to apply. And 
a lot of what what Daniel's just talked you through applies. Um, the things that are different, first of all, is the platform. So we don't use the Felvi website. Uh, by the way, for those of you that don't speak Hungarian, I, I think that Felvi means something like like apply or, or application. Uh, but the system that we use for international students is called Dream Apply. So uh, you can you can scan this QR code that you can see on the screen and it will take you straight to our international applicant website that's called Dream Apply. Uh, alternatively, you can just search for Corvinus Dream Apply. Yeah, so I mean dream as in when you're asleep at night having a dream. Uh, that's, that's what the system's called. And uh, you can find the page uh, through searching that on Google as well. So uh, the other thing that's a bit different as well as the platform is, is deadlines. So you can see it's, uh, it's I've included less elements than, than Daniel had because he's done a lot of that work for me by explaining. Uh, but I will focus on you know, just one date, really. So you should apply by the 30th of April. Yeah, so this is very, very important. So you have more time to prepare your application as an international student, but you have to be doing all these other things uh, that Daniel just talked about, which includes having your cre credits recognized, uh, so making sure you meet the credit requirements for the program. There is some, some administration for you to do that. You have to, to review your bachelor transcripts. You have to fill out a form to show where you, where you think uh, your credits qualify you uh, for a particular study area. And also you have to do this GMAT, GRE or NMAT, uh, which which Daniel discussed in, in detail in his presentation. So it's pretty much the same. The, the, the one thing that would be different is the points limits for international students. So we also have minimum score requirements, but at the end, rather than a score out of 90, you, you would have noticed on the slides that there's, for Hungarian students, there's up to 10 points uh, that can be allocated for extracurricular, for sport or for equal opportunities reasons. For the international application process, we don't have that. It's just a flat score out of 100 uh, just for your, your performance in the, the GMAT, the MAT, or the GRE, typically. Okay, so by 30th of April, you must apply. Uh, Daniel talked through the programs where there's potential for you to do an entrance exam, but generally we just look at the GMAT, the MAT, or the GRE score. And for people that are above the minimum score, but not quite enough to be admitted, on certain programs, uh, you can have this kind of extra chance, if you like, of, of having the chance to interview. The next step after, which is very, very important, particularly for people that aren't EU nationals and who will need a visa to, to enter Hungary or a residence permit to stay in Hungary, uh, then you have to pay your tuition fee. And, and this is important so you can be unconditionally accepted then with an unconditional acceptance letter, you can start the visa application process or the resident permit extension. OK, I've mentioned the date. I'll say it one more time. So 30th of April is the very, very last date, not only for you to apply, but for you to have provided all the documents. So it means that you need to be to be independent. You need to be proactive make sure that you've prepared for the GMAT, the MAT or the GRE test because it's, it's you know, up to you to, to book a date to do that test and make sure you have the results well before this deadline. So my, my advice is you know, be, be ready a month before this uh, with, with everything just in case anything gets delayed. There's no, no need really to, to wait until the 30th of April. And there's a small application fee of 75 euros as well. Okay, so just really quickly on entry requirements, I think most of this has been covered. So yes, you need these one of these three papers, the NMAT, the GMAT focus edition, or the GRE. You can see the minimum score requirements here on the slide. So it's 165 points in NMAT, 485 points in the GMAT focus edition, or 300 points in the GRE. If you don't have that score or a score equivalent to that, at least that in one of these three papers, you cannot be admitted to a master's program at Corvinus. So that's very, very important. Okay, um, 
You need to have a bachelor's degree meeting the minimum credit requirements as we've discussed. And then once you've submitted this along with a passport as well, which you upload to this online application system, will then con convert your score in the GMAT, DRE or NMAT into a percentage score. As I said, it's out of 100, not out of 90 for international students. And then the dean, which happens to be Daniel, and the program director for the program that you've applied to will set a points threshold. So they might say everybody above 75% can be admitted. As we mentioned, I'll say it one more time, there's programs where you might be above the minimum score, but not quite at the point threshold. And we, we can give you a chance to do an interview, but those are selected programs only. And uh, Daniel covered that in his slides. Last point on this page, you can see on the slides rather, there's no additional English language requirements, which I think is good news. So you don't need to spend extra money going to do a, an IELTS or a TOEIC, for example. All you need to do is the GMAT, the GRE, or the, the NMAT paper. If there's an English language component or there's a written component to that. So we assess your English skills through, through this. Uh, the one exception is the MSc Management and Leadership Programme. There are requirements for, special requirements for, for this programme. Uh, so you would need to sit one of these English language papers. And uh, typically it's a C1, around the C1 requirement. I believe for this program. So have a look on the website. You can see what the requirements are there. And that's all I want to cover. Uh, we're going to open up to questions now. Thank you very much for your for your time. Best of luck. If anybody wants to connect, please feel free to add me on LinkedIn. And if you're an international applicant and you've got questions, my email address is on the screen. Take a, a photo now quickly before it disappears and uh, get in touch if you've got any questions. Over to you, Chanad. Thank you so much, Matt, for the additional infos for uh, international applicants. And now uh, we will have back uh, Daniel as well. And uh, we are now monitoring our chats over Facebook and uh, YouTube as well. So anybody just feel free to ask uh, questions you may have uh, concerning the application process or admission process. Mm, and while we are waiting for uh, questions to come, I would have one uh, just before me. Uh, and that that's uh, the following. What are the chances that I'm able to apply for a more business focus uh, master's with a human study based bachelor's degree? So if you could answer uh, this question, that would be uh, really helpful for some of the applicants. All right, let me start me to answer and then maybe Matt will uh, compliment me. So uh, you have a good chance, I would say, because uh, what you have to consider is, is the uh, requirement for the program. What kind of knowledge, what kind of uh, skills you have. You know, you, during the credit valuation process, credit approval process, we investigate it. And if you just go to the homepage of the, of the, when we publish all basic or main information about the program that you are looking for, that you can see um, the requirements. And uh, um, uh, of course, if you are not quite sure based on that, uh, please write to the felvi.corvinus felvi uh, at unicorvinus unicorvinus .u email address because we will answer and help you and assist you to, 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 to determine whether you are uh, in a good position or not. So, uh, but it's, it is usual and it's a good, good idea to, to add uh, a business like program master program in your portfolio after you have a social you have some, you have a program bachelor program from the social science field so uh, um what what is the what is my personal advice yeah once you do the admission test it's also don't worry about that it's it, it's not covering uh, business like or management like knowledge so um 
it's not a kind of difficulty that you need to fulfill right now. Uh, so this is it, I think. Matt, do you have some ideas from that, maybe? That was a really good point that you made at the end, uh, that the GMAT, the MAT, or the GRE isn't. It's, although it's not a direct answer to this question, it doesn't yeah. have business content. So I think it's a good message for everybody attending today to take. If you're applying for a social science, don't be put off by thinking this is a business school admission test. It's, um, it's really much more to do with your use of language and your logical reasoning. And uh, is there anything else? Verbal reasoning, I guess, but that's kind of use of language. Um, yeah, I, what I'll do after this, uh, because I'll be finishing speaking shortly, I'll just post a link to these credit recognition forms. And I think the, the best thing really is for everybody to undertake their own analysis to see if they would meet the credit requirements. But probably there will be a course for you if you've got a humanities background at Core Venus. Uh, you might have to now change your initial um, priority perhaps but you you can really we're very transparent so we we have all of the forms available now that you need to fill in take a look see what, how your credits fit and donny gave the email address for the hungarian students uh of course for international applicants i should say rather than students uh, we're also happy to help you so i gave my email address earlier but there's an inquiry form on the website as well where you can reach us thanks Thank you so much for both of your answers. I cannot really see any more questions right now. So uh, I guess it's time to move on to the program introductions. So thank you once again for being with uh, us here uh, today and all the information. Uh, so see you. Uh, thank you and enjoy the day. Thank you so much. So now uh, we will going forward with uh, 11 master programs uh, introductions. Uh, some of them will be in Hungarian. Uh, those will be the ones that we only offer in the Hungarian language. All the others that are offered either in uh, Hungarian or in uh, English, they will be held uh, entirely in uh, English. First and foremost, uh, it will be a Hungarian one. Uh, szóval hadd csak most uh, egy pillanatra magyarra. Elsőként a vállalkozásfejlesztés uh, szak fog bemutatkozni, illetve egész pontosan Aranyosi Márta, a vállalkozásfejlesztésnek a szakfelelőse fog néhány gondolatot mondani a szak szakról magáról, illetve a felvételiről, és várjuk ide is a kérdéseket majd. Köszönöm szépen, Csanád, a bemutatást. Aranyosi Márt vagyok, a vállalkozásfejlesztés mesterszak szakfelelőse, és valóban ezt a szakot egyelőre csak magyar nyelven hirdetjük, úgyhogy ennek következtében a következő 10 percben röviden szeretném bemutatni a szakot magyar nyelven. További információkat majd ezekkel a QR kódokkal érhetnek el a nézők, hogyha azon keresztül felkeresik a honlapunkat és az ott található információkat. És az azt követő 10 percben pedig én is kérdésekre válaszolnék, hogyha felmerül a hallgatóságban ilyen. Úgyhogy vágjunk is akkor bele a szakbemutatásába. Elsőként talán arról a legfontosabb kérdésről érdemes beszélni, hogy milyen karrier út nyílik meg azok számára, azok előtt, akik a mi vállalkozásfejlesztés mesterszakunkon végeznek. Azt gondolom, hogy az egyik leg egyértelműbb és sokak által preferált karrierút, ami ezen a szakon elindítható, az valamilyen vállalkozás alapításához, startup alapításban való részvételhez vezet. Itt láthatják ezt a, ezt a karrierutat az újat létrehoz címszó alatt. Sokan jönnek egyébként hozzánk olyan hallgatók is, akik nem feltétlenül egy új vállalkozást szeretnének alapítani, hanem a családi vállalkozásuk elgeneráció váltás előtt, és esetleg ők lesznek a következő következő vezetők ezekben a vállalkozásokban erre szeretnének felkészülni. Emellett természetesen a hallgatóink nem csak kis és középvállalatokban, startupokban kezdik meg útjukat a munka világában, hanem nagyvállalatokban is szeretettel fogadják őket itthon és külföldön egyaránt. Jellemzően olyan jövőcentrikus munkakörökben, amik valamilyen stratégiai elemzéssel, tervezéssel, innováció menedzsmenttel foglalkoznak. De nem csak a tervezés az, amire azt gondolom felkészülnek a hallgatóink, 
hanem a megvalósításra is, és nagyon sokan helyezkednek el projektmenedzsment munkakörökben, és ezen belül is viszonylag sokan egyébként valamilyen digitalizációhoz, információtechnológiához kapcsolódó projektmenedzsment feladatokat látnak el. És végül, de nem utolsó sorban, sokan helyezkednek el az alumninkból olyan pozíciókban, amelyek a vállalkozói ökoszisztémát kívülről támogatják. Lehet ez egyfajta tanácsadói életút, amely akár általános stratégiai tanácsadást is jelenthet, természetesen ilyennel is foglalkoznak végzett hallgatóink, de sokan fókuszálnak digitalizációs projektekre és azzal kapcsolatos tanácsadásra, de egyébként ez az ökoszisztémában való elhelyezkedés, ez jelenthet más típusú feladatköröket is, finanszírozó intézményeknél, például kockázati tőke alapnál, bankoknál is elhelyezkednek a végzett hallgatóink. És akkor nézzük meg röviden azt, hogy ezekre a munkakörökre hogyan készülnek fel a hallgatóink a képzés két éve során, Ugye egyrészt, hogyha bal fölülről indulunk ezen az ábrán, akkor egyfajta elemző kompetencia csomagot igyekszünk nekik átadni. Ez jelent kvantitatív és kvalitatív elemző képességeket is, köztük tehát például pénzügyes tudás és képességelemeket, és a stratégiai menedzsment eszköztárakat is tanítjuk itt a vállalkozásfejlesztés mesterszakon. Az elemzésre épül a következő lépés, a tervezés, és a tervezéshez kapcsolódóan egyrészt ez már említett stratégiai szemléletmód lesz hasznos, másrészt pedig az innováció menedzsment tudomány területében is elméletben és gyakorlatban is elmélyülnek a hallgatóink a képzés során. És végül, de nem utolsó sorban, ahogy már említettem, nem csak elemezni, tervezni tudnak a hallgatóink, hanem a megvalósításban is aktív szereplők lesznek majd, és ehhez segít hozzá a vállalkozói szemléletmód, amely egyfajta generalista skillset-el sajátítását jelenti itt a szakom, és a projektmenedzsment szemléletmód, ami pedig kifejezetten egyedi a mi korvinuszos vállalkozás fejlesztés mesterszakunkon. Azt gondolom, ez az erős projekt szemléletmód és a pénzügyi kompetenciáknak az előtérbe helyezése az, ami megkülönböztet minket, nem csak a hazai, hanem a nemzetközi business development vállalkozás fejlesztés mesterszakok piacán. És akkor ezt megint nézzük egy kicsit közelebbről. Tisztában vagyok vele, hogy a részletek esetleg nem látszanak így a nézők számára, de itt a fönti QR kóddal meg lehet tekinteni a szaktantervét is, amelyben ezt az itt most ábra formájában bemutatott tantárgyi hálót részletesen minden információval együtt meg lehet tekinteni. Amit itt ábrázolni szerettem volna is egy kicsit érzékeltetni az érdeklődőkkel, az az, hogy ezt az előbb említett 5 plusz 1 szakterületi pillért, ami a, a szaknak a, a bázát, a lényegét jelenti, azaz a pénzügyi szemléletmódot, stratégiai, vállalkozó, innovációs és projektorientált szemléletmódot, amit még kiegészítünk genere, generikus kompetenciákkal, akár hard skill-ekkel, a, például a társasági jogterén, vagy soft skill-ekkel a kommunikáció terén. Ezeket a pilléreket tehát lépésről lépésre igyekszünk felépíteni a képzés során, negyed évről negyed évre, vagy fél évről fél évre épülnek egymásra az ezekhez a pillérekhez kapcsolódó tantárgyaink, sőt, aztán időnként össze is érnek, hogy csak egy példát mondjuk a kockázati tőkefinanszírozás tárgyunkban például egyszerre, fejlesztjük tovább a hallgatók pénzügyi eszköztárát, és egyben a vállalkozói szemléletmódot is fejlesztjük, és gyakorlatias példákkal, feladatokkal segítünk a vállalkozói létre való felkészülésre. Így néz ki tehát a szaknak a tanterve, erre a hat pillérre épül, és aztán ezek a pillérek elvezetnek oda is, hogy a képzés második évében, harmadik fél évében, egy-egy szakterületben, egy-egy karrierútban egy picit jobban is elmélyülhetnek a hallgatóink, hogyha szeretnének, ők választhatják ki, hogy melyik három irány közül elérhető tématerülettel szeretnének egy kicsit behatóbban megismerkedni. Ez mind, mindegyik, mind a három terület két-két tantárgyat jelent egyébként. Az egyik a már említett stratégiai, elemző, tervező karrierútra készít fel jobban, a második a projektmenedzsment világában 
ad további betekintést, és végül, de nem utolsó sorban, nagyon népszerű természetesen a vállalkozói attitűd blokkunk is, amely pedig kifejezetten ezt az entrepreneurship szemléletet erősítése, ezt az eszköztárat segít elmélyíteni. Ez tehát az a három, nálunk nem specializáció, hanem blokk formájában kínált, specializálódó lehetőség van, amelyet a harmadik fél évben kínálunk a hallgatóinknak. Minden mellett természetesen azt gondolom, hogy a mesterszak nem csak a, a tantermen belül, hanem a tantermen kívül is sokat hozzáadhat a hallgatóink életéhez, szakmai és magánéletéhez természetesen egyaránt. Ezek között kiemelném a nemzetközi lehetőségeket, a, a külföldi fél év lehetőségét, és különösen azt, hogy a, a CEMSZ képzésbe is bekapcsolódhatnak a hallgatóink. Ehhez kapnak támogatást is azáltal, hogy a mi tantervünkben is meghatároztuk azokat az ekvivalenciákat, amivel egy picit könnyebben, gördülékenyebben lehet a CEMSZ képzést a két év alatt, vagy esetleg kettő plusz két év és egy fél év alatt elvégezni a vállalkozásfejlesztés mesterszak mellett. Aki esetleg nem ismeri a CEMSZ lehetőségét, annak nagy szeretettel ajánlom, hogy ismerkedjen meg vele, szerintem egy rövid Google keresés segítségével hamar megtalálja akár a Corvinusos aloldalt is. Ugye ez egy nemzetközi kettős diploma lehetőség, egy nagyon rangos CEMSZ diplomát kaphatnak a hallgatók a vállalkozásfejlesztés mesterszak mellé, és ekközben egy külföldi tanulmányi fél évet, és maguk mögött tudhatnak majd, amellett, hogy külföldi szakmai gyakorlaton is részt vesznek. Azt gondolom, hogy ez az egyik legjobb értékajánlata a Corvinusnak, akinek egyébként is remek portfóliója van mesterképzések között, de ez azon belül is kiemelkedő. Nemzetközi lehetőségek mellett itthon is természetesen nyújtunk a tantermen kívül nagyon sok programot, lehetőséget. Ezek közül szeretnénk nagyon gyorsan kettőt kiemelni. Az egyik az alumni mentor programunk, ahol a szak most már 10-15 évnyi alumnia jár vissza hozzánk évről évre, nem sokára egy jövő héten lesz egy ehhez kapcsolódó eseményünk, és a, a korábbi végzetjeink, tanácsaikkal segítik a jelenlegi hallgatóinkat. A jelenlegi hallgatóknak így módon van lehetőségük mindenféle karrier, vagy akár, akár karrier magánélet összeegyeztetésére vonatkozó kérdést feltenni a végzetjeinkhez, és több karrierútba betekinteni már itt a képzés során is. Emellett a, a szak mellett azzal párhuzamosan működik egy remek diák szervezet is, a Vállalkozásfejlesztés Klub, ami elsősorban a vállalkozásfejlesztés mesterszakokat, mesterszakosokat tömöríti, de nem kizárólagosan egyébként, és itt nem csak a szakmai fejlesztésre, hanem a közösségépítésre is nagy hangsúlyt helyeznek a hallgatóink és a diák szervezet vezetői tagjai remek rendezvényekkel egészítik ki azt a tapasztalat csomagot, amit egyébként a szakatantermen belül nyújthat a hallgatóinak. Ennyit szerettem volna gyorsan elmondani a szakkal kapcsolatos tényekről, arról, hogy hogyan néz ki a képzés két éve, milyen fontos képességekre, és koncentrálunk, és karrierutakra készítjük fel a hallgatóinkat a tantermen belül és kívül. És akkor ennél a diánál állnék meg azzal, hogy itt a lehetőség arra, hogy mindenféle kérdéseket feltehessenek az érdeklődő nézők. Közben kiemelném, hogy az itt látható QR kódot, hogyha befotózzák, akkor azon keresztül közvetlenül érhetik el a szak felvételézőit célzó honlapot, ahol további információkat is megtalálnak. Nagyon szépen köszönjük a sok információt a szakról Aranyosi Márta szakfelelősnek és lenne is egy kérdésünk, egész pontosan kettő, mégpedig, hogy mennyire flexibilis a tanterv, van-e lehetőség a mindennapi munkához igazítani az órákat? Uh -huh. Rendben, kezdjük is ezzel. Ez lett volna az a kérdés, hogyha nem teszi fel senki, én is megválaszoltam volna, mert tudom, hogy ezt az élő alkalmakon is nagyon sokszor felteszik a hallgatók, és kíváncsiak erre természetes módon. Azt gondoljuk, hogy hogy nyilván örülünk annak, ha hallgatóinknak van lehetősége a tanulmányaikra fókuszálni minél inkább, hiszen nem sok egyetemista év van már előttük, és az alatt az egyetem által nyújtott lehetőségekből szurkolunk, hogy minél többet ki tudjanak használni. De emellett is azt gondolom, hogy talán nem ördögtől való, hogyha némi munkával 
támogatják nem csak a megélhetésüket, hanem a kompetenciáik kikerekítését is. Azt szoktuk javasolni a hallgatóinknak, hogy lehetőség szerint egy részidős állásnál 20 óránál többet ne vállaljanak, nyilván, hogyha erre lehetőségük van. És, és Szoktuk azt is tanácsolni, hogy a munkahely maga is nem baj, hogyha rugalmas munkaidőt és, és távmunkavégzést is lehetővé tesz. Általában ez az, ami jól összeegyeztethető a mi mesterszakos képzésünkkel. Ettől, ezen túlmenően azt tudom mondani, hogy a, a tantervet igyekszünk úgy összeállítani az óra, az óra rendet egész pontosan, hogy legalább egy, de van néhány olyan fél év, amikor két üres nap is van az óra rendben, különösen ha a hallgató ügyesen csoportosítja az óráit. Tehát igyekszünk-e arra törekedni, hogy legyen, legyenek nagy egészben lévő üres időszakok, amit természetesen akár munkára, vagy akár másfajta fejlődésre, diákszervezeti feladatokra, önkénteskedésre is felhasználhatnak a hallgatóink. Úgyhogy ennyiben, ennyiben tudunk azt gondolom segíteni. Remélem, hogy ez nagyjából választ adott a kérdésre. Köszönöm szépen. Jelenleg nem is látok további kérdést, úgyhogy szeretném még egyszer megköszönni a, a szakbemutatást. Ha az időt nézzük, akkor igazából még egy percünk van, szóval azt Szívesen, azt, szívesen, megválaszolnék, szívesen megválaszolok még egy kérdést, ami felszokott merülni, és amire nem tértem ki azt az előadás során. Ez általában a, a külföldi fél év időzítésének a kérdése szokott lenni. Erre is igyekeztünk figyelni a tanterv kialakítása során, hogy a harmadik fél év az viszonylag szabadon struktúrálható a hallgatók számára, ott kötelezően választható és szabadon választható tantárgyakat kell a tanterv szerint felvenni, így ez jellemzően a legkényelmesebb és rugalmasabb arra, hogy a külföldi fél évre el tudjanak menni a hallgatóink, és igyekszünk megtalálni azt a jó és egyben szabályos lehetőséget is, hogy minél több tantárgyat be tudjunk fogadni a külföldön elvégzettek közül. Úgyhogy, úgyhogy erre lehet számítani, hogyha valaki szeretne külföldre menni, akkor az a harmadik fél év, tehát ugye az őszi, második őszi fél év lesz, ami erre tűrhetően ideális, és ott, ott tudjuk ezt legjobban megvalósítani. Nagyon szépen köszönjük a plusz információt. Ez egész biztosan hasznos tényleg azoknak, akik akár a a jelenlegi vállalkozásfejlesztés szakra szeretnének jelentkezni, de akár tényleg azoknak is, akik bármelyik mesterszakunkra, mert nyilván felmerülnek hasonló kérdések máshol is. Úgyhogy köszönöm szépen még egyszer Aranyosi Márta szakfelelős asszonynak a jelenlétét és a tájékoztatót, és egész biztosan, hogyha még további kérdések lennének a közeljövőben, akkor akár írásban is választ kaphatnak az érdeklődőkre. Úgyhogy köszönjük szépen még egyszer. Így van, köszönöm én is, és szeretettel várom a jelentkezőket és az érdeklődőket egyaránt. Mi pedig már is mennénk tovább, ismét egy magyar nyelvű tájékoztató fog következni a biztosítási és pénzügyi matematika mesterképzésünkről, és már is itt van velünk Kovács Erzsébet, szakfelelős asszony, aki pedig be fogja mutatni a szakot szint úgy 10 percben, és aztán pedig itt is lesz lehetőség kérdezni kommentekben, úgyhogy mind Facebookon, mind pedig YouTube-on várjuk a, a kérdéseket. Köszönöm szépen a bemutatást, és üdvözlök mindenkit, aki az egyik legjobb mesterszak iránt érdeklődik. Különös sajátosságunk az, hogy ezt a Corvinus Egyetem az LTTTK-val közösen hirdeti és működteti. Ennek az a közvetlen következménye, hogy mind a két egyetem oktatóival találkozhatnak, egészen kivételes képzésben van részük, általában kis létszámú a szak, és ezért az oktatókkal is, meg a hallgatótársakkal is nagyon kollegiális hangulatban nagyon komoly szakmai barátságokat lehet kialakítani. Ha még abba is belegondolnak, hogy ez egy multidisziplináris mesterszak, ami nem csak azért multidisziplináris, mert két egyetem tanítja, hanem azért, mert a matematika mellett a biztosítást és a pénzügyet is meg kell tanulniuk, hogyha erre a szakra jelentkeznek. És így egy országosan egyetlen és két egyetem által kiállított 
diplomával fognak rendelkezni. A matematika tudás az egy erős alapot ad ahhoz, hogy akár aktuáriusként, akár kvantitatív pénzügyesként dolgozzanak. Ez a két specializáció jellemzi a szakunkat, és mind a két specializáció elindul minden évben. Az első fél év után tudnak választani, hogy a kettő közül melyiket szeretnék tanulni. Ami igazán kiemelt és nagyon fontos, hogy a két egyetem és az oktatási hivatal abban egyezett meg, hogy felváltva indul, tehát páratlan években a Corvinus indítja mesterszakot, páros években, tehát 2024-ben pedig csak az ELTE. Nem lehet tehát választani, hogy ide vagy oda nyújtom be a jelentkezési lapomat, hanem február 15-ig, most az idén az eltére kell beadni a jelentkezést. Ettől függetlenül minden információt megkapnak a Corvinus honlapjain is, és a felvételi vizsgákat közösen szervezzük, az írásbeli és a szóbeli is közös, az oktatás is közös, ez csak annyiban változik, hogy most az anya egyetem az elte lesz. A felvételi tájékoztató az eltén is zajlik majd, ebből is látszik a szoros együttműködés. Ennek van egy olyan előnye, hogy az ELTE, mint állami egyetem Erasmus ösztöndíjat is tud adni, tehát önök számára ez a lehetőség sem szűnik meg. Ami még ehhez hozzátartozik, hogy nagyon keresett a szakma, ezért nagyon érdemes azon elgondolkodni, hogy azt a nehézséget, amit önökre hát, hárít a tanulás, azt azért érdemes mindenképpen választani. Az előző évek alapján a kezdőfizetések kiemeltem magasak. Itt betettem néhány szlájdot, hogy lássák, hogy mind az aktuárius, mind a kvantitatív elemző Magyarországon kiemelten jól keres, de ez egész Európára, sőt a világ más részére is igaz. Hogy mit fogunk önöknek tanítani? Ezek nemzetközi szakmák, tehát nemzetközileg egyeztetett tematika alapján oktatunk, nincs sok lehetőség ettől eltérni, mert hiszen ez biztosítja azt, hogyha külföldre mennek ezzel a diplomával, ott is el tudnak helyezkedni. Ennek szintén következménye, hogy bár az oktatás nagy részt magyarul zajlik, egy angol munkanyelvű szakot végeznek el, nagyon sok fogalom, nagyon sok kifejezés, definíció angolul van, és ezt úgy, ezt úgy segítjük önöknek elsajátítani, hogy az órák egy része is angolul zajlik, vagy egy-egy tárgynak egy-egy előadása angolul zajlik. Ami még szintén fontos, hogy ha külföldön akarnak ezt a szakot elvégezni, akkor sokkal nehezebb és sokkal drágább utat, hatalmas vizsgadíjakat kellene vállalniuk. Hogy kiket várunk, igazából mind matematika, mind fizika alapszakkal lehet jönni, de természetesen önöket most elsősorban a közgazdasági beáramlási lehetőséget szeretném önöknek megmutatni, alkalmazott közgazdaságtan vagy gazdasági informatika pénzügy számvitel, és hát még néhány más alapszakról is szívesen és sikeresen jöhetnek hozzánk, ott esetleg egy-egy tárgyat pótlólag előírhatunk önöknek. Ezek az itt a listán szereplő szakok pedig teljes kreditbeszámítással érvényesek. Az időrend elég feszített lesz, Ebben próbálunk segíteni, hogy amikor március végén, április elején megkapjuk a felvételire jelentkezettek névsorát, akkor ingyenes felvételi előkészítőt szervezünk, ez általában áprilisban szokott zajlani. De ne felejtsék el, hogy nem csak felvételizni kell, hanem szakdolgozatot írni, mindenféle zárt helyiket csinálni. Tehát amikor májusban az írásbeli felvételi van, akkor önök már jó fáradtak lesznek. Ezt úgy lehet előkészíteni, hogy már most elkezdik a matematika és a közgazdasági mikromakro témákból a felvételi kérdéseket átnézni. A felvételének az a lényege, hogy az írásban 20 pontot lehet szerezni, a súlyozott tanulmányi átlag 15, a szóbeli pedig 45, és ha jól szóbeliznek, akkor a szóbeli duplázása is egy lehetőség, de írásbelit akkor is kötelező írni és a kétféle írás belére majd önök megjelölik, hogy melyiket szeretnék választani. Aki közgázos alapszakról jön, annak nem ajánlom, hogy, matematika, hogy csak matematika felvételit írjon, hiszen az az eltést tanárok által összeállított példasor. Tehát önök számára a 10 pontos matek és a 10 pontos közgáz tételek segítenek. A vizsgasorokat elérhetővé tettük, mint az ELTE, mind a Corvinus oldalán a régi feladatsorokat megnézhetik és gyakorolhatnak, és a 
ezek a konzultációs felvételi előkészítők is arra szolgálnak, hogy ezekről beszélgetnek a tanárokkal, megbeszélik a helyes megoldásokat. A szóbelin is vannak szakmai két, két érdések. Itt lehet az írásbelin esetleg elrontott témákból még javítani, és egy rövid motivációs beszélgetés is van. Ebből a három témából tevődik össze az a az elérhető 45 pont, ami esetleg duplázható, ha az önök számára az a kedvező. Ami még ilyen csalogató, hogy nem azt gondoljuk, hogy önök saját maguk megtanulnak mindent, hanem az első fél évben az úgynevezett másik egyetem felzárkoztató tárgyait hallgathatják, és így mindenkinek, ami hiányzik, azt ott megtanulhatja. Mivel az idő nagyon szalad, ezért igyekszem gyorsan a végére érni, a szakmai alapismereteket az első fél év végéig tanulhatják meg, és akkor tudnak dönteni, hogy az adatelemzésen biztosítás, életbiztosítás numerikus pénzügyeken keresztül melyik téma iránt nőtt meg jobban az érdeklődésük. A szakmai karrierjük az egészen biztos lesz, nagyon sok állás lehetőség van, és nagyon keresik önöket, mindenki már a végzés előtt el tud helyezkedni. A, ami még itt fontos, hogy a, mivel ez egy közös szak, ezért az eltén is lesz tájékoztató, ha valaki a személyes találkozás híve, akkor január 26-án pénteken 14 órakor az ELTE lágymányosi híd melletti D épületében a harmadik emlet 218-as termében láthat minket és kérdezhet. És hogy ne maradjanak, e-mail cím nélkül. Én vagyok akkor Vinuszana a szakfelelős, Kovács Erzsébet a nevem, és ugye ebből adódóan erzsébet.kovács, és a kukac után unikorvinusz.hu az e-mail címem. Bármilyen kérdésre szívesen válaszolok, hogyha önök írnak nekem. És köszönöm a figyelmet, hajszák pontosan 16 óra van, úgyhogy várom a kérdéseket. Köszönjük szépen az átfogó tájékoztatást, és hogy egy Ilyen szép képet kaphatunk a képzésről. Lenne is két kérdésünk, úgyhogy azokat felolvasnám. Az első egy adminisztratív jellegű kérdés. Lesz-e a Corvinuson vendéghallgatói jogviszonya az adott hallgatónak a képzés idején? Igen. Így van, természetes. Ez azt is jelenti, hogy például a könyvtárba is ugyanúgy beiratkozhat, választható tárgyakat felvehet, Mindenféle olyan, ami a Corvinus-szal jár, az jár a vendéghallgatóknak is. Köszönjük szépen, és lenne Köszönjük még egy kérdés, hogy a corvinus gyakran emlegetjük, ugye mindenféle kommunikációs anyagban megjelenik, hogy legalább négyes diploma kvázi helyettesíti a felvételit. Ez mi a helyzet a bpm esetén? Mm, ez nem szerepel a mi felvételi bemeneti követelményeink között, tehát nálunk írásbelizni és szóbelizni is kell. De megéri. Megéri, hogy átismételi az anyagot, és utána egy sikeres felvétel itt tesz. Rendben. Köszönjük szépen a választ. Még van 9 percünk, úgyhogy én még lehet, hogy kérdezek közben, de addig Jó. várjuk továbbra is a kommenteket. Egy olyan kérdés ütötte nekem meg például a szememet, hogy ugye ez most az eltén indul ebben az évben a képzés. Ez azt jelenti, hogy a a, a fizikális órák is az eltén fognak megrendezésre kerülni, vagy az osztva van a... Jó, jogos a kérdés. Az órák azok mindig úgy vannak, hogy a közgázos jellegű tárgyak, pénzügy, jog, ilyen tárgyak, azok itt vannak a Corvinus épületében, és a, a matematika felzárkóztató tárgyak vannak az ELTA épületében. Fizikailag ezt úgy kell elképzelni, hogy igyekszünk úgy beosztani, hogy egy nap csak az egyik épületbe kelljen menni, de természetesen ez sem biztos, egy egészséges a a Dunaparton, és átmenni a hidon, vagy átvillamosozni. Tehát a, az órák, azok a tanárok szerinti épületben és beosztásban vannak. A, arra figyelünk, hogy lehetőleg legyen idejük átmenni, ne legyenek átfedések. De a mindkét egyetemre járnak, mindkét egyetem büféjét használhatják, meg a tornatermet, meg a könyvtárat, számítógéptermeket, mindenhol dolgozhatnak. De ez nagyon Bilágos. fontos kérdés valóban. Köszönöm szépen a pontosítást. Még nekem egy olyan kérdésem lenne, 
hogy itt a prezentáció vége felé láthattuk, vagy hallhattuk, hogy kapkodnak a partnerek a frissen végzett, vagy hát majd a hamarosan végzéshez közelítő hallgatók iránt. Ez azt is jelenti, hogy mondjuk az órai projektek keretében ismerkednek meg a hallgatókkal ezek a vállalatok, vagy hogy, mm. hogy kell ezt az egyik működést elképzelni? Igen, nagyon jó kérdés, Csanád, ezt nagyon köszönöm. A dolog úgy néz ki, hogy a legtöbb tantárgyban vagy maga az oktató, már egy szakmabeli meghívott vendégelőadó, vagy az óra egy részét szakmabeli vendégelőadók tartják. Tehát például akár az életbiztosításban, akár a biztosítástan előadásában vezető kockázat elemző szakember tartja az órát, akinek szakmai, tehát a munkahelye van, biztosítónál dolgozik, vagy a Morgan Stanley-ben dolgozik, vagy a BlackRocknál dolgozik egy-egy oktatónk, és az órákra jön az egyetemre. Van persze olyan is, hogy egyetemi kollega tartja az órát, de ő is bevonz egy-egy résztémára komoly, elismert szakembereket. Egyrészt ők a mindennapi közvetlenül hozzák a problémákat, tehát így nem csak elméleti az oktatás, tehát nem csak elméletben beszélünk arról, hogy mi az, hogy kockázat, hanem akkor konkrétan is az, hogy egy-egy cégnek mit jelent a kockázat, és az hogyan kezeli. Ez az egyik. A másik pedig az, hogy egyes cégek ajánlanak ösztöndíjat, hogy a hallgatónak ne kelljen dolgoznia, hanem vállalati ösztöndíjat kap az elején, illetve az első év után nyáron elmehetnek szakmai gyakorlatra, megnézhetik, hogy hogy működik az, amiről eddig tanultak. És az első évben nem, de a második évben már egy 10-20 órás munka is belefér. Részben szakmai tapasztalatot szereznek, részben a szakdolgozati témájukat tudják pontosítani, kiteljesíteni, nem csak belső konzulensük van, hanem külső konzulensük is lehet, és ettől sokkal, sokkal közelebb kerülnek a leendő szakmájukhoz, azon kívül, hogy természetesen pénzt is keresnek. Köszönöm szépen. Köszönöm. Uh, még van néhány percünk, úgyhogy... Uh, még egy ilyen mindig nagyon aktuális kérdést dobnék be, hogy esett szó valamennyire a nemzetközi lehetőségekről, viszont ez, ez ahogy közelebb kerülünk a, a képzési kezdéshez, a szeptemberhez, mindig szerintem egyre inkább megfogalmazódik az emberben, hogy akkor milyen lehetőségei vannak mondjuk külföldi fél évet teljesíteni, és... Ez most egy kicsit ugye speciális, hogy a, az eltés rendszer is, meg a kavészos rendszer is közrejátszik, éppen melyik évben indul a képzés. Mi az a, a BPM-en, ami az a külföldi egyetem, vagy külföldi képzés, amit leginkább szoktak előnyben részesíteni a hallgatók, és ahol mondjuk tényleg a tárgyak nagy részét, vagy akár teljes egészében el tudják fogadtatni itthon? Uh-huh. Um. Egyrészt valóban így van, hogy az ELTE most Erasmus ösztöndíjat is ajánl, tehát az ELTE partner intézményei közül lehet választani. Amit én, mint egykor az egyetem Erasmus felelőse, én minden módon segítem azt, hogy a hallgatók külföldre menjenek és beszámítsuk a tudásukat, de természetesen mondok egy példát, biztosítási és pénzügyi jogban a magyar jogszabályokat kell ismerni. Tehát ha valaki mondjuk európai jogi ismeretekkel jön haza, akkor azért sajnos neki le kell vizsgázni az itthoni tananyagból is, hiszen ez nem teljesen szinonimája egyik a másiknak. Tehát amit lehet, az beszámítunk, támogatjuk is, hogy menjenek, például Hollandiában is remek lehetőségek vannak, Svédországban is remek lehetőségek vannak. Annyira jók a kapcsolataink, hogy volt olyan, aki kollégaként kint tanított hosszabb, rövidebb ideig ezeken az egyetemeken, mert ugye megismerték, hogy, hogy itt nálunk milyen jól felkészült volt. Tehát nagyon élénk munkakapcsolatban vagyunk ezekkel az egyetemekkel. Ezt úgy kell elképzelni, ha még az időbe belefér, hogy mi évente kétszer találkozunk az összes európai egyetem, ahol aktuárius képzés van. Ott van egy úgynevezett oktatási bizottság, és az egyetemek képviselői ott találkoznak, és egyeztetik egymással azt, hogy az oktatás valóban a színvonalnak megfelelő tartalommal és, és kellő részletességgel tárgyal mindenféle témákat, úgyhogy ezért ismerjük egymást, és elfogadjuk egymás tananyagait. 
Köszönöm szépen. Közben érkezett kommentben is egy kérdésünk még, hogy a kérdezőnek az lenne a kérdése, hogy a felvételihez szükséges-e a gmat teszt is az írásbel és a szóbeli vizsga mellett? Nem, most az idén nem, mert most az ELTE, az ELTE-vel, a Corvinusnak és az LT-nek van egy szerződéses megállapodása, ami még nem tartalmazza se a GMET-et, se az nmet tehát nálunk a saját oktatók által készített írásbeli és szóbeli vizsga lesz az idén. Hogy a szerződés hogyan módosul, azt még nem tudjuk, de az a most felvételiző hallgatókat nem érinti. Szuper, köszönöm szépen. Én Lassan köszönöm. az időnk végére is érünk, úgyhogy... Én szeretném megköszönni Kovács Erzsébet szakfelelős asszonynak a tájékoztatót és a válaszokat a kérdésre, és feltételezem, hogy a továbbiakban is áll a rendelkezésünkre, hogyha akár írásban is majd lennének kérdéseink, úgyhogy várjuk ezeket továbbra is, akár e-mailben, akár kommentben is, majd valamilyen módon biztosan sort kerítünk a válaszadásra. És akkor tényleg köszönöm szépen még egyszer, hogy itt voltál. Köszönöm szépen a remek kérdéseket is, meg a jó időbeosztást is. Viszontállásra mindenkinek. Köszönöm So, uh... Now let's moving, uh, let's move forward with uh, some of our English speaking or English uh, thought uh, masters courses. So uh, first and foremost, it will be the stage for the business informatics uh, masters program. And now let me invite uh, Zoltan Sabo, the program director for. Uh, the Business Informatics Master Program and also Chaki Chaba, Chaba Chaki, for uh, who is a lecturer on the uh, Business Informatics Master's Program. So uh, welcome and please uh, have your 10 minutes uh, for the introduction and after that we will have some questions. Yes, okay, then we can start. So, uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Zoltan Sabo. I'm responsible for this master program, the Corvinus University. Let's start this uh, short overview about the uh, program. The Corvinus University offers uh, a bachelor in business information systems or business informatics in Hungarian language. Uh, and uh, a master program uh, in part-time form uh, in Hungarian and uh, an English language uh, program uh, for the full-time students. We have also data analytics in business uh, bachelor program uh, that is also interesting for the potential students because all the catch-up courses uh, in the field of IT can be found from uh, this uh, data analytics program. For those students who has uh, a bit uh, uh, less, uh, less, uh, not so uh, strong uh, background in business studies, they can have many uh, business subjects from the uh, several English language uh, business programs. We also offer a PhD program uh, in the field of business information systems. So students uh, applying for uh, or master can continue their studies on uh, PhD level. Let's talk about uh, the content. This uh, master program is uh, around 20 years old in uh, this, uh, in our university. And uh, the last new version of the uh, program uh, was introduced last year. So there was a major uh, uh, redesign of uh, the program in the last year, uh, focusing on uh, the industrial uh, feedbacks and needs. Uh, we also use the feedback from uh, the uh, alumni members and uh, many other uh, professional uh, bodies. So based on uh, these ideas and also 
our own uh, strategies. We developed a brand new program that uh, launched last year. Uh, the structure is uh, the following. Uh, in the first two semesters, uh, we have uh, uh, two compulsory uh, subjects per semester uh, and uh, a few core elective uh, subjects that can be selected from uh, the list that you can see here. So we have uh, 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 basics of management information systems uh, focusing on digital transformation. So it's a uh, uh, digitalization uh, focused uh, course in the first semester. We have also a software engineering course that helps uh, you to understand the uh, most important aspects of uh, software development, uh, especially the uh, issues and topics in uh, business analysis to understand business needs, model it, and so on. There are many core elective courses that are uh, available for you. Uh, for example, in the field of IT, uh, students should select two or three subjects from this list. For example, IT security or process management and ERP. Uh, there are many business subjects uh, uh, selected from uh, the business master programs. So each student can find uh, the best portfolio that can uh, extend their skills and knowledge about the field. And the second semester, uh, an advanced level business intelligence course uh, is compulsory for the students and also an overview of the uh, legal aspects of uh, technology and information systems. So these are the two compulsory subjects and also additional uh, correlative uh, subjects can be selected. Uh, an important aspect of this uh, framework that uh, if you have, for example, strong business background, then probably you will need some catch-up courses in IT. On the other hand, you can uh, submit uh, credit acceptance uh, based on your former business uh, studies, business subjects. So you can uh, uh, select more IT subjects and also bachelor level IT subjects, and you should learn uh, less additional business subjects. And vice versa, if you have strong technical background, then you can skip some of the uh, uh, IT core electives and you can focus on the business studies and uh, uh, improve your uh, business related uh, knowledge and skills. On the next uh, two semesters, I think the more exciting, most exciting uh, subjects can be found. Uh, according to our uh, plan, uh, we would like to offer three specializations. The first uh, specialization is about uh, business analysis and IT governance. Uh, this, uh, uh, this specialization uh, uh, focuses on, uh, on uh, the strategic uh, aspects of IT strategic planning, uh, understanding business needs, governing uh, the IT uh, unit, managing the IT uh, activities in an organization, implement uh, IT uh, development initiatives, so IT project management. And we have also some initiatives uh, in uh, uh, financial technologies. So, there is a subject focusing on digital transformation and financial technology related innovations. And of course, uh, uh, in this uh, scope, we would like to also discuss uh, the uh, artificial intelligence and its role in uh, corporate strategy. The second uh, uh, specialization is about data analytics. So all those students who want to be expert in the field of data science, data analytics, 
and found some really interesting subjects here. But uh, we would like to uh, give opportunity to extend uh, their skills and knowledge uh, in uh, many other fields, not just in data, pure data analytics. So for example, data engineering and uh, AI related uh, aspects will be also discussed in this specialization, while uh, the typical data analytics related uh, methodologies, softwares, uh, and uh, approaches can be also uh, found in the curriculum. So there will be project-based subjects also and uh, all the important uh, methodological uh, uh, background can be found here. And the third uh, specialization is uh, about digital innovation. Here, uh, the focus is uh, uh, focus uh, is on uh, on the innovation aspects of IT. So, artificial intelligence uh, uh, has a key role in this uh, curriculum. Also, digitalization. Uh, we also put some emphasis on on the implementation. So, IT project man management is also relevant here. But uh, we uh, also uh, have opportunity to, to uh, introduce the students into the innovation management aspects of uh, technology and also the financial technologies uh, are uh, relevant here. So these are the portfolio of the digital innovation uh, specialization. Of course, uh, these specializations are available uh, according to the number of uh, the applicants so if uh, we have uh, let's say three groups of the uh, students uh, then we can we can uh, launch all three uh, specialization if we have less students then we can launch only uh, two of these specializations so it's depend on the uh, applications uh, the uh, host of uh, this master program is the Institute of Data Analytics and Information Systems. We have uh, five departments at the moment in this institution. Uh, altogether, we have uh, 70 uh, professors and uh, uh, colleagues in the group. I'm the program leader, so if you have any further question, you can send me uh, and I try to uh, help you to, to discuss the uh, questions and, and uh, the uh, issues. There are many questions and I will tell you a few things about the, uh, about the uh, exams and the eligibility criteria. But uh, let me tell you a few things now me, uh, about the additional opportunities. We have research centers, many research initiatives uh, in the field of Industry 4.0, FinTech, uh, and uh, uh, in the field of data analytics. So we have many uh, opportunities to participate in uh, international uh, research projects and also in collaboration, uh, in collaboration with uh, external business partners about the requirements uh, of course this uh, program is not just for the uh, business informatics students so other programs can be also acceptable but it's uh, important to note that uh, to be eligible for this program you uh, have to uh, document uh, many uh, uh, necessary or required credits from sciences, minimum 10 credit, business subjects, minimum 20 credits, and IT, uh, minimum 40 credits. At the uh, moment of the application, less credit can be also acceptable, but during the first two semesters, you should fulfill the entry requirements so during that sem the two semesters, you should get the necessary maximum uh, uh, 
30 credits that is missing from uh, at, the, at the moment of the application. This means that you have a strong IT background, but, but uh, uh, you miss the necessary uh, business knowledge, then you have to take one, two, or even uh, in extreme case, uh, five subjects in business or two subject, uh, four subjects in business. On the other hand, if you have a less strong IT background, then you should take two, three, or even four uh, subjects in IT about the entry examination. Uh, we use the standard approach of the university, so applicants should uh, take the international test. All additional information about uh, these aspects can be found on the uh, website of the university. And now I'd like to give the floor to my colleague, Chaba Chaki, who will tell you a few things about the content and about the most interesting part of uh, the program, I think, artificial intelligence and, and some other aspects of the program. So, Chaba, please continue. Do you have the slides, Zoli? I, I hey, next one. Okay, thank you. Yeah. And then one more. So, uh, welcome, everyone. As Zoltan pointed out, uh, uh, we have uh, three different specializations uh, we're planning to run uh, on a, in our master program, and all those three have uh, artificial intelligence uh, as a reasonable part of the program. And here I listed up a few uh, actual projects, professors and uh, PhD students at our institution uh, are working on. Um, mostly, uh, tradition, so to say, traditional machine learning projects, but we also started to work in large, with large language models, uh, or, or you might know the generative AI or ChatGPT. Uh, for example, one of my projects is about sustainable energy, but we also have people working on production out optimization, IoT, and IoT data uh, analysis using artificial intelligence. We do chatbot development, mostly for helpline support. We work with banks and the financial industry uh, to help uh, with their use of artificial intelligence uh, language models. And a couple of uh, researchers work in the logistics and warehouse management uh, area. Uh, one of the PhD students, for example, working in uh, uh, using artificial intelligence algorithms to manage uh, warehouse of chemical substances, uh, you, usually because of uh, these chemical stuff are very dangerous. So their arrangement in the warehouse is crucial and we use AI models to help uh, warehouse managers uh, with the placement of stuff. And of course, there's a completely different uh, area which actually impacts all of our university and many universities uh, with the arrival of the chat GPT like uh, artificial intelligence generative models. We have uh, projects looking at the impact of artificial intelligence on education, how you sh as students should use it, how lecturers, teachers, professors may be able to use it during teaching, how uh, uh, students can use it during learning. Uh, the various AI tools. Uh, basically, our focus is helping both lecturers and students with the efficient and ethical use of artificial intelligence. So we're not simply using AI, we also understand its impact and investigate or research its impact on the education process. Could you move on to the next slide? The last slide. And of course, as you notice, uh, of course, artificial intelligence is not the only thing uh, people at our department do, and not the only thing students can get involved, not the only kind of projects students may get involved in, but we also have other areas, uh, most notably FinTech. We have a very special executive uh, MBA program uh, focusing on banks, and we have uh, FinTech uh, programs as well. Obviously, we're dealing with blockchain, crypto, not investment with crypto as a technological issue, so we're not uh, gambling. No, there are professors who do, but generally that's not our research. And for example, Zoltan himself is involved in process management for SMEs and uh, process mapping and other uh, uh, efficiency improvement uh, research. Um, another area, Zoli and some other professors work on digital transformation, mostly for SMEs, but also for larger organizations. And lately, uh, like many other uh, 
uh, universities, we started to investigate opportunities with virtual reality, especially metaverse, and we just have a new building opening uh, specifically designed for data science, and we have a physical uh, server and uh, a computer room called the data space, when data science and data engineering students can work with the latest technology and investigate various uh, technologies, techniques, and work with uh, outside projects. So that probably concludes our introduction. Back to you, Zoli. Thank you very much. Any questions concerning the topics covered by the program or, or the entry exam? Thank you so much for both of your uh, introductions and presentations. Uh, I cannot seem to find any incoming uh, comments uh, or questions, but I would have one. Um, most of the time students or uh, future students ask whether the uh, um, flexibility of the uh, schedule of the courses allow them to work besides studying. How is it with uh, business informatics? Uh, this issue has two dimensions, <clears throat> in my opinion. First of all, uh, if uh, the student has uh, some, let's say, uh, advanced knowledge, they can uh, request uh, uh, the acceptance of credits, and by this they can spare time for themselves. That's uh, the first of all. If the student has, uh, let's say, a, a strong business informatics uh, background, even uh, he or she can uh, uh, finish the, the program, complete the program quicker than for semester anyway. And the other aspect is that uh, we always try to manage the timetable of the program to be a student-friendly uh, program. We can't offer evening classes anyway, but we try to manage it uh, in a student-friendly way that uh, enables students to, to work part-time in part-time jobs, so uh, we try to manage this kind of things. Perfectly clear. Thank you so much. Um, I have one additional question that we can see just on the screen. Uh, what Erasmus or uh, TEMS uh, double degree programs may be offered during uh, business informatics masters? Okay, the community, the, so the TEMS program is available for the students. Uh, Erasmus uh, uh, programs are available as to the other Corvinus uh, students. So uh, you know that this framework is you now a bit uh, uh, differently managed uh, in Hungary, but uh, there are alternative frameworks for uh, Erasmus programs. And uh, we have a, a double degree program with University of Porto, also, we are working on uh, other double degrees, so probably during uh, the next month we will finish uh, all the necessary uh, collaboration, uh, the preparation of the collaboration, also the contractual part, and these uh, double degrees will be also available for the students. Okay, thank you so much for the answers. Uh, as I can see, we've already run out of time. So thank you so much for uh, participating and being uh, here with us today. So for further questions, uh, if there will be any, uh, somehow I'm sure we, we will can get an answer for our uh, future students. So thank you so much and uh, we'll be in touch uh, soon. Thank you so thank much. You. Goodbye. So uh, next up, it's uh, Marketing Masters with the uh, Program Director Irma Ogardi, and we will also have uh, Mirko Gatti, who is a lecturer at the Marketing Masters. Uh, thank you, Janet. Just a short sound check. Can you hear me and see me? Yes, right? thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, 
I don't know whether so everyone is here, but I think we anyway we started a later, so I I think we just start the presentation right now. I'd like to actually give you some insights into the two-year master program. As uh, Chanad introduced me, I'm the program director uh, of the marketing masters and the and the one-year programs as well. Uh, and uh, first, we, we like to, I, I like to talk a bit about the two-year program, and uh, my colleague Mirko Gatti is here to share some experiences, teaching and student uh, experiences, because he already uh, um, taught in, the, in this first year uh, in this program. So feel free to ask your questions and leave, leave this, I think, in the comment parts. We can actually see also the chat. So what, what should you know about the Marketing to Year Master's program? First of all, this is a renewed program. We launched this renew, a completely renewed program uh, with a really uh, updated to an international level. We launched this program actually this, uh, uh, sorry, the previous year, fall. So, uh, and uh, this is a 120 credit program. And uh, what you have to probably very, uh, just in a nutshell, know about this program that uh, this program has a kind of low credit requirement. So we, uh, take people with five ECTSs uh, from social and economic sciences. But I mean, since this is a very low uh, credit requirement, um, our goal is also to invite people to, to the marketing master's programs with different, um, from different sciences like sociology, psychology, communication, political science, or even technical education, or maybe, maybe you might come from arts as well. So this program has really a, um, uh, a broad invitation for everyone who is interested in marketing or wants to pursue a marketing career. Uh, you can see here that what kind of uh, marketing jobs can you uh, apply for when you complete a, a two-year program uh, like, like our marketing program. So you can actually be hired as an online marketing expert, a social media specialist, digital and customer experience expert, market and business analyst, market researchers, sales managers, and of course, lots of companies uh, need product and brand managers, or maybe experts in trade marketing and sales. But also, I mean, this uh, kind of degree is suitable for applying uh, to be a web analyst, marketing technology experts, or, or working at advertising agency. I mean, uh, our program is, um, um, structured and developed in a way that i mean uh, most students are going for uh, going to, uh, going to apply for jobs uh, at multinational companies but of course some of those students are working at starts the startups or smes as well who got a degree in marketing master program so of course when we designed this program we had a, uh, i mean we uh, benchmarked the leading international universities and also uh, colleagues conducted lots of interviews with um, with companies and marketing managers, and uh, we have actually four pillars of this program. We like to provide you a very found, founded theoretical knowledge in marketing. Uh, we also uh, put a large emphasis on developing uh, analytical skills, not only qualitative but also quantitatively. Uh, lots of courses incorporate um exercises or and and teaching methods that develop your creativity and of course uh since we are uh, the leading institute in in hungary uh therefore uh, lots of companies are hiring from from us of course the first of course assistants but later on this this uh the former students become managers so strategic thinking is also very important. So all these things, all these skills and competencies are incorporated in the in the courses of the programs. You can see here very briefly the structure of the program. The first year is, is rather a foundation level, since we take uh, pe uh, people from different disciplines. Um, you have to learn some uh, basic business and economics courses. This is called foundation courses, like manager economics, but also marketing management, applied market research consumer behavior, integrated marketing communication. And of course, uh, as I told you, you need to uh, complete courses in business like information systems or corporate finance, leadership and organizational behavior. And we also provide you electives um, in the first and the second years as well that they are 
actually very suitable for developing uh, soft skills regarding design thinking, identity management, intercultural uh, skills, or me, and also we like to educate our students or sense, uh, make them sensitive to sustainable ethical issues in marketing. The second year is more about the specialist um, uh, education. Uh, where you also have some core marketing courses like advanced marketing research and courses about innovation, branding, services, sales management, uh, and marketing strategy. And of course, you have to write the thesis work as well. But we also provide modules, which are a kind of compulsory elective um, units in the, in the curriculum. Uh, it means that these modules have each three uh, courses, so you have to actually choose a model, that, and then within the model you have to complete all three courses. I just copied here the slides very briefly. You can see it here the online marketing communication model, including digital marketing communication strategy, content marketing, and the business project that is that will build on these two previous courses. I won't actually go into details because I like to have. Uh, leave more time for questions. Uh, the innovative channel man management module includes uh, three main core, uh, uh, three courses as well: uh, retail experience, channel design, which is more uh, suitable for people who are actually think about going into sales or or uh, on retail areas or supply chain. Uh, and of course, this module includes a, a business project as well, where you can work on real life uh, business problems. And uh, this is of course valid for the, for the previous model as well. And uh, you learn how to manage a project and how to you know, come, uh, develop actually a project from a briefing to, a, to an implementation. And the third module is uh, for those who like to crunch data. So it's about data-driven uh, marketing. Uh, and uh, we teach here advanced research methods for data-driven marketing decisions. So advanced analytical methods, AI-based methods. And we also teach this how these methods can be used uh, to build up customer relationships. This is actually covered by the customer relationship management course. And this module has also a business project where we where you also work actually on a, a real life example with companies and uh, databases uh, and apply the advanced research methods. Okay, so some um, uh, information about the approach, how we teach. We actually teach on a competence-based approach. Every course has a competency and skill list that you need to learn and able to use after uh, completing the course. Uh, so we focus on this and we also uh, we do this by uh, uh, giving students a kind of autonomy. So it means that you have your uh, lots of uh, responsibilities. So actually you are part of the learning uh, and teaching and the learning process. So teachers are actually acting more as a mentor, as a coach to help you to develop and learn, learn the competencies, the knowledge and the skills um, uh, crafted in that course. It's also we also use a lots of co-creation methods where we, where, you, where we use innovative teaching methods where you can actually have a large influence on, the, on your uh, learning and the outcome of the, of, the, of the project. We also put a large emphasis on developing the digital skills. Um, and as I told you, we actually hand, uh, we basically we relate to students as a partner. So it means that you have a perceived control in the learning process uh, based on the approach, but also uh, based on lots of exercises when, that uh, use continuous assessment. So it means that you not only just go to the classes and uh, listen to the lectures and, and do something in the seminar, uh, and then in the final exam, you earn you most of your points, but just on the contrary, uh, me, uh, most of our courses uh, include lots of exercises uh, that uh, makes, uh, basically that gives you a lot of tasks during the term, and most of your points will come actually from the, from the performance that you, that you provided in the, in the term, and usually final exams, I mean, it depends of course on the courses that most of the final exams um, you can earn only just a few, 
small portion of your points. And of course, while you do continuously exercises, tasks, and projects, you get also um, feedbacks. So you actually know how you develop during the term. Um, we also provide individual and uh, group uh, project works as well. And of course, we use a uh, lots of innovative teaching methods, case studies, gamifications, uh, incorporation of arts. We invite lots of guest lecturers from leading companies and uh, marketing managers that you can learn a lot uh, during your studies. Uh, probably what is more is even important that uh, um, you, in the two-year program, we provide lots of international programs. We have uh, currently three, uh, three double degree programs with a French university, the Catch, Catch Business School, with the Portuguese university called Catolica Porto Business School. And uh, the most recent uh, double degree uh, program is uh, German uh, with University of Passau, which is in Germany. So uh, this double the degree program means that uh, one part of your uh, study will happen at Corvinus and the other part of your studies at the double degree university. So uh, in case of catch, this is uh, uh, one term. In Catolica Porto, you can actually spend two terms. And in University of Paso, you spend also one term. Uh, and, and the main point is in this double degree program that after completing the program, you can earn two diplomas, so one from Corvinus and that other from the double degree partner. And these universities are also uh, renowned universities. So actually that uh, uh, their diploma is also very valuable, just like as the Corvinus diploma. And uh, we have another uh, uh, cooperation with the TEMS uh, program. So marketing master students can enter the TEMS program as well. Uh, this is uh, TEMS uh, universities are the best uh, uh, business schools um, in Europe and now I think even outside of outside of Europe. So this provides also uh, I think uh, one term uh, study abroad, another term um, trainee uh, trainee uh, at somewhere abroad as well uh, at the companies who are also. Uh, partner partnering with the TEMS network and beside this you can actually go for Erasmus scholarship or the new name is this Panon uh, program that replaces uh, the Erasmus scholarship but we have lots of uh, bilateral um, contracts with leading universities you can see a few access from the partner universities here and uh, what is also very important, let's just shift to the end requirements because I received lots of questions to that. Uh, first of all, you have to uh, do the entrance exam. Uh, I mean, two, two main pillars. Uh, so you have to fulfill um, the entry requirements uh, from two uh, sources. The one, one, so one source or one pillar of the entry requirements is the entrance exam, and the other one is the credit recognition. I'll show you a bit more details. Um, probably you, if you checked out the website of the university, this is actually an overall rule, not only typical for, for marketing. Um, you have, um, for marketing masters, basically you have two options. Um, the C is just uh, for admission interviews, but for marketing master's two year program, there is no admission interview. So basically option A is um, that you have a diploma from a, a bachelor diploma from uh, universities uh, with international accreditation like AACSB or Equis accreditation, or alternatively, you have actually the diploma from TEMS uh, uni partner university. Uh, with a with a degree of minimum good or in the international um, grading is this is ECTSB. Uh, so I mean, Corvinus University actually uh, satisfies this uh, requirement, but no other universities in Hungary. So if you if you are coming from another higher education institute from Hungary or maybe from another um, from or from abroad, then very, then you have to go for option B, which means that. Um, you need to uh, write the international text, either GMAT, GMAT FE, uh, NMAT, or GRE uh, as well. So there are three, uh, four options. Uh, so you see here the minimum point sets, 
Um, so well, you can see that if you, uh, I mean, the, the grading skill is uh, from, from overall the international test, you can actually earn 90 points uh, and the minimum points to for admission is actually 65 points that is converted from the different international tests. You see here the, in the table this information. Um, and you can earn plus 0.10 uh, points if you had some outstanding achievement in sports, for example. So it's a national, European or world championship, uh, or uh, you actually were among the three best uh, presentation or, uh, or among the three best students in the national uh, Hungarian scientific uh, conference. Uh, or, I mean, there are other, some, some other uh, uh, points where you can earn, uh, uh, so some, some other criteria where you can earn points, like uh, some people, so students, applicants with disabilities or maybe with child. So if you can check out the admission policy, you will see. Uh, so this uh, kind of criteria. Uh, and of course, if you come with a diploma from accredited university or maybe from Corvinus, you can see that if you have a diploma with a good degree, then you start with uh, 75 points. Uh, and if you have a diploma with a very good degree or above outstanding uh, diploma, then uh, you can earn 10 points. And then you can, just as in the previous case, you can earn 10 points. Right. I mean, the credit recognition is, is the other pillar, which means that you have to have five credits altogether from this uh, subject area. So I think most students, most applicants can fulfill this uh, this requirement. So I don't think that that's the, the strictest part of the admission process. Um, and maybe just a few things about the about who we are. So we are a leading marketing community in Hungary and also I think in Central uh, Eastern Europe. Uh, the professors who are teaching in the program have international uh, research experience and we cooperate with uh, uh, well-known companies. I mean, this is just uh, a few information, but I don't want to go into details. Uh, and uh, I just like to leave here this QR code that you can uh, read and this will lead you to the to the program descriptions so thank you very much for your attention and now i'm glad to take your questions and i don't know whether mirko you like to add something because probably mirko will answer some questions as well because he has already experienced uh, teaching in this renewed program oh thanks thank you very much Irma. If, if any question can uh can rise then uh, i will try to answer it i uh, i taught in the last semester uh, applied market research methods this um, this elementary course for for understanding marketing research uh, process methods and uh, and tools that we could use so if you have questions just i'm open to to answer okay. these thank you i can see some questions here chana will you moderate the or yes, sure. Um, we will have a questions about uh, credits mainly. Uh, mm -hmm. If you can have it on the screen, I would be grateful. Um, so it's about um, so uh, this question is about uh, a student who graduated uh, on bachelor's from mathematics and IT. And as I can see, this question focuses on uh, the finance, not yeah, the yeah. marketing program. So maybe we will answer that later. Uh, but we have another uh, question concerning credits. Yes, thank you so much. Uh, so the student has uh, 188 uh, credits uh, from a Czech uh, university. Mm, is it possible that uh, she's eligible uh, for the accredited option uh, mm -hmm. as to take into account uh, their uh, diploma without the GMAT or other international tests. I'm not. I'm not sure that this is just uh, you know a broad scope of Czech university because I think University of Prague is an international accredited university. Mm -hmm. If I um, if I remember correctly, but actually on the website. Um, there are uh, there are links. So uh, 
to check out AACBS universities, ACRIS universities, and TEMS universities as well. So you can, uh, Yulia, check out very easily whether your university belongs to that university where you can actually, uh, uh, the group of universities where you can actually uh, go for option A. Uh, because I'm not sure that, uh, so Czech university is a specific university. <laughs> so uh, I don't know by heart. Uh, I know that University of Prague is, is very likely eligible. So if you have a diploma from University of Prague, very likely you are eligible for the option A. But um, uh, I suggest to check out to make it sure, okay? Sure, thank you so much for the answer. Uh, we would have just another question uh, concerning the possibilities to work part or full time uh, besides completing the master's program. Yeah, thank you for this question. We, this is also a very frequently asked question. So um, we won't forbid anyone to work or, you know, uh, pursue the career. But you have to know that we also require actually a, a workload at the, at the courses. So as I mentioned, uh, we build up the courses that are uh, using a lot of within term exercises, projects, whatever. So roughly the the learning hours a week um, add up to 30 hours so a week so if you if it's, it, i hope it's helped because we also calculated that so it depends uh, it maybe uh, sometimes a bit more sometimes a bit less uh, and then you have to actually be able to decide whether you can fit in uh, in this kind of um, learning hour uh, requirement your your job so yes i think um, Mirko can add even more to that question. Thank you, Irma. I, I was just uh, recognizing some kind of uh, frustration among the students, those students who were having a job, having a mm -hmm. full-time or part-time job uh, in my group, and they were struggling getting their grades in the end because of mm -hmm. the lack of time that they could sacrifice on studying and mm -hmm. it was visible not only in the final exam but also in the group work project and mainly in the class participation so it added up and in the end uh, no matter how hardly they wanted a good grade they didn't uh, have the chance mm -hmm. to get it because i said that it's mathematically impossible of based on their performance and mm -hmm. this was my experience but maybe the those students can uh, give more yeah i mean uh, unfortunately we don't have any students here <laughs> we invited them but they are all busy so uh but no i mean it's, it's, so uh to be honest very likely a full-time job doesn't fit in i mean if you if you have some part-time or maybe you have a maybe 10 or 20 hours and i mean you are very young and and can do this with less sleep as normal then then it's probably feasible uh, but uh, as, as Mirko mentioned, that we in this is this program, we uh, increased basically the the learning hours. Also, not uh, outside of the class as well. So you have lots of individual tasks from uh, from one week to another week. And of course, what I haven't mentioned that currently this program is running as a quarter year program. So it means that. Uh, you have a course within seven weeks. So it means that the class is also doubling. So in, in one course, you have four classes a week. And very likely you have a lecture and maybe on the second day you have to read something and, and at the end of the week, you have to prepare some assignment. And uh, two courses are running usually parallelly within one quarter. And what we got as feedback from our students because you already made some poll that actually they liked it. Uh, because seven week is um, so they could actually focus on these courses in a very intensive way, and this is really helps learning the skills and and uh, and you know the competences that we we think this is important in uh, within the course, but it also time demanding. So very likely a full time job is not very feasible or very stressful, I would say. So I hope we answered your questions with that, and probably this is uh, might be might cover the questions of others as well. Okay. Thank you so much for uh, both of you answering this question. 
and I believe this should be a wrap uh, for the two-year marketing master's program. And now uh, we are moving on with your other uh, masters that's a one-year program and called marketing strategy and innovation so if we could hear a bit about that and as i can see mirko is leaving us yeah he is. <laughs> so, thank you so much for your participation thanks thanks Irma. Uh, thanks Jeanette. Goodbye. thank you thank you very thank you. much Bye -bye. Uh, just a minute Jeanette, because i wasn't sure i can upload the two uh, mm -hmm. presentation at once so i upload actually now the uh, the presentation for the marketing strategy and uh, innovation program. No problem. That's okay. Thank you so much. Uh, because I didn't want to confuse the two presentations. So now I think it's coming. And um, okay, we will actually, I will later on, uh, because Julia asked me, I will later on. Um, 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 Copy the link here. Okay, now I think it's uploading and we'll start it uh, in a few seconds. I think it's it's uploaded. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, welcome again. Maybe some some uh, students are already here from the previous presentation, uh, but those who are new and came only for the marketing strategy and innovation one year program, I um, uh, I'm really glad to have you here. Uh, my name is Irma Gade. I'm the program director or academic director of the of both marketing programs. So, I actually. Um, also for the two-year and the one-year master program. What I'd like to sh uh, actually present you in a very briefly that what was the basic idea of this program and what is the structure, what are the requirements, uh, what opportunities do we uh, provide for students, and after that, actually, I'd like to take your questions. Um, okay, so let me start with the... Um, uh, information that this is a new program we introduced they launched this program at uh, in the fall time of 2023 this is a 60 credit year one year marketing uh, program it's called marketing strategy innovation and uh, it offers opportunities for students uh, with degrees related to business administration with some marketing background and also very important that it requires higher uh, higher uh, entry uh, credits as well. I like to really emphasize this because we had uh, last year uh, lots of applicants for this one year program, but they were not eligible, uh, even if they had actually reached the admission points. Uh, in the credit recognition process, um, so they were dropped out because they didn't have the requirements. So. Please note that this is not just a one-year program substitute of the two-year program, but this program requires much higher credits uh, from the business and marketing areas than, than the two-year program. Okay, so that's why, and we also had applicants from sociology and, and other areas, but they usually do not are not eligible for that program. So please uh, make sure, I mean, that, or maybe just focus on this, that this is designed for uh, students who are coming with a kind of degree from business administration or international business uh, or some kind of, uh, I don't know, commerce and marketing, um, bachelor programs and similar uh, programs. Okay, let's, um, I, I already showed you this class in the two years program uh, that, uh, so, I mean, with this degree, uh, you can actually fulfill jobs as an online marketing expert, social media specialist, digital customer experience uh, expert. You can work in market uh, in the area of market and business analysis, uh, like a market researchers or an analyst. But you can also go uh, go for sales 
uh, direction uh, or towards sales direction as well. So you can be a sales manager. Of course, we uh, um, educate uh, students here who be become later product and brand managers or maybe working in trade marketing or a sales expert. But of, of course, uh, our uh, courses cover marketing communication uh, or maybe you can actually uh, apply for jobs like web analysts, marketing technology experts, or maybe work for an advertising agency as a key account manager. Uh, I mean, since we are the leading um, university in Hungary in marketing education, uh, of course, our main focus is on training uh, students for being able to work at multinational companies, but of course, our students work in uh, for uh, small and medium uh, enterprises as well, or uh, lots of people actually um, uh, working at startups as well. So, but we focus on uh, professional uh, marketing methods and marketing knowledge. So, therefore, I mean, I think most of our students go to multinational companies at least at the big at the beginning stage of their careers. Okay, so uh, our program was designed based on four main pillars. Uh, or and I also can say that is a four main objectives or or uh, uh, masters program. First of all, we like to uh, provide you a very founded theoretical knowledge related to marketing. It might be multidisciplinary, but uh, theory is very important here, and that should be paired with analytical skills. Um, you will see the structure of the program that we have a uh, lots of uh, research methodology. Um, courses uh, that we provide you or even modules where you can actually uh, specialize yourself into data-driven um, courses. Um, of course, we, we're speaking about marketing, so creativity is, is still a very important part uh, uh, of our uh, education as well. And, and maybe uh, the, the fourth objective reflect uh, refers to, to the goal that uh, we aim to build uh, students here or, or educate students here or build knowledge that uh, that that basically supports managers so people who actually after a certain stage become uh, managers or even so top managers so strategic th thinking is is very important uh, in our program and now you can see the structure of the one year program uh, we, we provide some core marketing courses, so we don't provide in the one year program any core business course like manager economics or, I don't know, uh, leadership management and things like that. We already expect that you have this and we check this in the credit recognition, but you will learn here advanced marketing research, marketing innovation and new product development, branding strategies, services marketing and customer experience, sales management, marketing strategy and and the thesis work of course you have to write the thesis work as well and beside this we provide so-called modules which are functioning a kind of compulsory electives the only difference is that this is not a, a list of compulsory elective courses but you this is a compulsory elective module list so once you choose one model you have to take all the courses of the model it's a kind of specialization but consists of fewer courses, let's say. And of course, we provide also elective courses uh, that develop your uh, soft skills like design communication, design thinking, identity management, intercultural communication, and sustainable ethical marketing. Okay, uh, I mean, these are the modules. I don't talk about this too much because we already have some delays, but in the online marketing communication model, you can teach digital market, you can learn, sorry, digital marketing, communication strategy, content marketing, and this is accompanied with a business project when you can work on a real life example brief by a company. Uh, the innovative channel management model consists of the retail experience and the channel design course, also, and also uh, this model has a business project part. Um, and finally, the data-driven marketing model uh, uh, provides the advanced research methods for data-driven marketing decision and the customer relationship management course. And it is, again, uh, uh, in the second quarter, you actually uh, have to uh, work on a real-life project in, within, the, within this data-driven marketing uh, business project. 
This is about their teaching methods. So we use a competence-based approach. Uh, it means that we like to achieve the outcome, so the knowledge, skills, attitudes, and um, autonomy that we um, craft in the course outline. So what we like to, uh, to be able to use after completing the course. Uh, we have a kind of mentor or coach type of approach in teaching. It means also that uh, you have an increased responsibility and autonomy of your learning process. Uh, and we achieve this by lots of uh, small projects, individual and group assignments during the during the term or during the quarter. We use lots of co-creation methods, developing your digital skills. And we try to also find a kind of balance between the individual and the group work, because individual work is, uh, of course, requires more effort, but it's also the more effective learning process. And group work teaches other skills and other competences when you can cooperate and work as a team team member. Of course, we use a lots of innovative teaching methods like gamification, simulations. We use um, AI-based uh, tools, but and also lots of case studies. And of course, we uh, invite a lots of guest lecturers from leading companies and industries. And probably what you are more interested uh, uh, is the entry requirements. Um, this consists of two parts, the entrance exam and the credit recognition. Let's just focus first on the entrance exam. Uh, you can see that um, in the marketing strategy innovation, you have actually three options. Um, option A is uh, when you have an uh, internationally accredited diploma with a minimum uh, degree of good. So international accredited diploma means AAC, SB or ACRIS accreditation or uh, alternatively you are have your bachelor from a TAMS university. I mean, uh, Corbin's university satisfies this re uh, requirement, but if you are coming from other Hungarian, uh, Hungarian um, higher education institute, then uh, very likely uh, you have to go for option B. Uh, oh, sorry, op option C, not option B. Uh, option C means that well, beside, uh, you have to write an international test where you have to reach the minimum points. And uh, so we, ha we have an ad admission interview uh, for 10 points, but you, out of the 10 points, you have to reach at, uh, at least five points uh, because anyway, um, uh, the admission process is not valid. And you can use plus 10 points from, uh, from other other uh, based on other criteria. So for example, you have uh, an outstanding sport achievement in national European and world championships, or maybe you have a, uh, you have a first, uh, you would be, you had the first, second and third prize in the Hung Hungarian um, a scientific student conference, or maybe some, some applicants who have disabilities or maybe raising a child, they are also eligible to earn some points. So this is the plus points that are coming from this area. And um, and there is an option D as well. I just realized that the university introduced this D options, which means that if you actually uh, write at least uh, 75 points in the international test, uh, then you don't have to make the admission interview. So you can count with only the international test points, uh, which can add up to maximum 90 points. And, uh, and you can earn the remaining 10 points from, from these plus points. Okay, so uh, I think that's about the entry exam. And you can see here the credit recognition. I already mentioned at the beginning that uh, very, so last year we had an experience that some people misunderstood the, the credit requirements. So please make sure that you, you, you meet the re uh, requirements if you want to apply for this program. Uh, so you have to have 20 credits from theoretical economic uh, studies or social sciences. You can hear a few examples. See here a few examples. You, ha you, you have to have 10 credits from methodology. So mathematics, statistics, and informatics. Uh, another 10 credits uh, must come from business studies like um, I don't know, management, human resources, corporate economics, business economics, corporate finance, and so on and uh, even basic marketing and 50 credits uh, should come from marketing studies. This, this can be also marketing uh, introduction, marketing, marketing research, 
consumer behavior, marketing, planning, and similar courses. Uh, but this is uh, actually a kind of strict uh, criteria in the first year program. In any other areas, you have to have, I mean, there is no requirements or restrictions on the, uh, on the remaining 15 credits. And unfortunately, the, I hope you can see that uh, based on a regulation, out of this 60 credits, minimum uh, 48 credits must come from economics, pathology, business, and marketing areas. But uh, 12 credits can be on during the one year program. So let's say you are coming from a business administration bachelor uh, program where you had maybe one or two marketing courses, all other areas are covered, then there's a possibility that you can uh, take maybe one course if, you, if you're missing six credits uh, during your one year, uh, one year studies, or in some cases, this can go up to two courses to 12 credits. So it means that when uh, when you actually admit it, so you have enough points uh, from the um, admission admission uh, admission process, uh, and you have thirty six credits from these areas. We can you can actually uh, uh, earn the the remaining twelve during the one year study. Okay, so that's probably very important. Uh, I mean, this is just that who we are at who mentioned you that we are a leading marketing academic community in Hungary and also in Central Europe, I guess. All professors have international uh, teaching and research experience with, who are teaching in the program. And we actually have really uh, distinguished uh, corporate partners we are working with. This is just a few information about the Institute. I think I would skip this. And uh, I'd like to thank you for your attention. And if you read this, um, uh, QR code, this will lead you to the detailed program description of the one year program. Okay. Yet let's give room for, for the questions. Uh, Thank you so much there. for the uh, explanation of the whole course. Um, we should write just a bit uh, if we have any arriving questions over the comment sections. Uh, but let me ask till then uh, the same question or, the, or a similar question uh, than before. So um, is it possible to have like even a part-time job uh, besides studying at the one-year masters, uh, like especially in case of marketing strategy and innovation? So. Uh, how flexible uh, it is uh, or how flexible the uh, schedule of the courses are mm -hmm. they are not flex even less flexible than the two years program so this is also a co currently a quarter based program uh, there are some discussion about whether we should stick to the quarter year or we go back to the 40 weeks or 30 weeks uh, um, term-based teaching. We don't know anything yet, so I don't know what will happen actually uh, at fall uh, 2024. But uh, I mean, in the current form, this is extremely uh, demanding, I think. So if, if someone is actually uh, trying to work uh, besides the studies, and I think because, I mean, uh, the, the second year of the two-year program and the one-year program is completely overlapping. But the, but the tricky thing is here that we don't have, you know, four semester to catch up with some of the courses mm -hmm. or, I mean, or you extend your studies. But I, I think most of the people want to come for the one year program because they really want to complete it in one year. Mm -hmm. So um, and um, and I think that that's 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 very tricky. I wouldn't say this is not feasible, but uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's demanding. It's demanding. So uh, that's sure. my question. Uh, um, uh, that uh, the one year program doesn't include any double degree programs mm -hmm. because it doesn't fit in. So if you're considering to go abroad, uh, maybe to other universities with Erasmus or, or even apply for double degree program, then I would suggest to go for the second two year program because in one year program, it, it, we're just not able to provide it. This is a very short time. Yes, thank you so much for the additional information. Uh, and now we have uh, one more question from one of the uh, listeners. So is it possible to be eligible for the master's program from the International Business Bachelors with the Global Economy Specialization? Mm 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, of course, I don't know the curriculum by heart, especially me for the for this bachelor program. But I mean, international business program. Um, I'm not sure that global economy specialized was well, eligible. But if you had enough business and uh, and marketing uh, courses, then it's possible. Or or at least you had one marketing course and you actually fulfill the criteria uh, for the other. I just go back very quickly to this. So if you have 10 credits from economic studies, methodologies, business studies, and maybe just one marketing course, then you can actually uh, take two uh, bachelor courses during the one-year program. But if you don't have any marketing course, for example, then that's a problem, very likely. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. We have another question. Is there any difference between the two marketing masters besides the time it takes to complete them? Are there two degrees equivalent? Mm -hmm. The degrees are equivalent, but uh, they are not not the same because uh, the two-year program is for those who don't have much foundation in business and marketing. So you, I think the first year is basically uh, consists of this core business and core marketing courses and some electives. Uh, and the second year is identical with the one year program. Uh, but uh, I would, uh, yeah, and, and, and the, that's why I also try to emphasize and really hope that uh, I succeeded to communicate this message that in the one year program, therefore, we need, you need much more, more uh, or much higher credit requirements because we don't have the first year where we can actually fund all these courses. So it's basically not the same uh, because the one year program required more uh, previous knowledge uh, gained in business and marketing um, uh, areas. And uh, that's why you can complete it in, within one year and, and, came, and come to the same degree at the end. Okay, thank you so much for the answer. Mm-hmm. Um, as I can see, we are a little bit behind on yeah, schedule. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Maybe just one word that uh, I hope these slides will be available and you can find my email address. And if you have any further questions, please feel free to contact me. Um, and I hope I will be able to join the chat, uh, chat even somebody else will Mm -hmm. present because I like to copy the link uh, for Julia here, okay? So thank you very much. Okay, no problem. Thank you so much for being here with us. And uh, now we are moving on uh, with another uh, English language program that's uh, Health Policy Planning and Financing Masters. And the program director for this master's program is uh, Valentin Peter Brodsky, who will be joining us in the next uh, couple of minutes to answer the uh, questions. And just before that, to uh, have a brief introduction of the uh, program itself. So uh, I'll give the stage to Valentin. Thanks, Jeanette. Uh, um, should I uh, here share my screen or, or, or will you start or you will start the presentation? Uh, you can uh, upload your slides. Yeah, yes, I, I have already uploaded. Yes, I just shared okay. and you can uh, present. Okay, so then, okay, so we are a little bit late, so I will try to be short. Uh, so first, good afternoon, <clears throat> everyone, and uh, uh, and welcome everyone to this uh, presentation of the health policy planning and and uh, financing uh, program. And uh, I'm very pleased to have this opportunity to talk to you today about the program. My name is uh, Valentin Brodsky and uh, I'm responsible for managing all aspects of the of the program. And uh, 
first I will give you a very, very brief or short overview about the, about the program. And uh, if we have some time remain, remaining, I will answer your any question that you ask in, in, the, in the chat. Okay, so first, uh, an overview of the background of, of the program. So our program is about the healthcare and, and healthcare is, uh, is one of the most, we can say one, one most important aspects of human life and well-being. And uh, the rest of the healthcare systems are very complex. You know, uh, financing or, or in improving the quality, safety or, or the productivity of the health systems is a global challenge today and uh, and the main aim of, uh, of our program um, uh, to equip students uh, and knowledge how to understand this uh, complex uh, uh, system so one of the main aim of, of health system to, to provide long life expectancy for the society and that's important in good uh, good uh, has and good quality of life and uh, and this needs resulting in a in a growing demand from health services and technologies and uh, and pharmaceutical and biotechnology industry uh, answering this market needs uh, very uh, quickly and uh, and and the, and the national health fund funders facing uh, mere mere challenges and and the financing decisions should be made very rapidly. And the program will uh, teach students uh, or equip students with a, with a strong uh, theoretical knowledge in health policy and health economics, and will provide um, the understanding of the complexity of the healthcare system. So the students who, who choose our program will learn how to 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 perform health economic analysis how to evaluate different uh, health technologies and uh, and how to use these uh, methods to to make uh, reimbursement decision and uh, and it's also important that our program is an interdisciplinary program between health, health medicine and, and economy and, uh, and it means also that our program is open applicants uh, with very different backgrounds so uh, for example students with a bachelor degree in health or, or, or medical sciences or, or economic or soci soci sociology so basically, very broad uh, uh, students uh, students who learned a very broad field can enter the, can enter, can apply to our program, and uh, after after uh, yes, what is after, what can you expect after the program? So after finishing the program, our students uh, can find. Uh, um, jobs in very different working environments such uh, health administration pharma or medical device industry or health economic consultancy agencies or research organization or even in, in academia in the okay let's move forward so in the next part i will show you the mm, the the structure of the program the course is uh, included in the program so the program uh, covers the main main topics of of uh, of health policy and health economics and the program consists of three main parts the first one is uh, you ca you can see in the upper part of the of the of the, of the slides um, is a is a general methodic methodological part in including uh, various courses about microeconomics, law, informatics, uh, management, or sociology. The second part covers health uh, policy related courses, 
and in this book you will learn in detail about um, the different aspects of health policy, uh, uh, like financing methods, how to finance healthcare system. You will learn about strategic planning and and how to manage a public health uh, public health project. Okay. The third part uh, uh, is the health economic uh, specialization. And this specialization has a very strong focus on, on health uh, economic evaluation and outcome research. So health, health economic evaluation basically tells us how much the uh, healthcare intervention are worth and how much they cost, basically estimating the cost effectiveness. And, uh, and the other, uh, the outcome research uh, covers, um, covers a set of scientific methods that evaluate how the healthcare intervention affects the, the patients. And, uh, and this health economic evaluation and outcome research is, a, is a very essential field of research. And, and this field of research in generating uh, highly relevant evidences that uh, bridges the gap between the healthcare and economics and, and extensively used in, 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 the health, in the decision making. And, and in this uh, and during this uh, specialization, so you will <coughs> learn, learn you will learn the concept of health economic evaluation and uh, 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 how to, to measure health gain, how to, how to measure the cost of the diseases, and also our students will learn about the uh, economic modeling, how to develop transition-based cost-effectiveness model. And, uh, and uh, also you, the students will learn about health technology assessment, how to, how to evaluate the clinical effectiveness of different uh, health technologies, how to conduct a systematic literature review and how to perform uh, uh, meta-analysis of, of uh, uh, health technologies and uh, and also finally uh, you will learn about also that how to make informed decision based on on health economic and clinical evidences so this is this was the structure of the our program and um, and beside the classroom courses the program includes a short uh, one 120 hours long internship and during the internship student can join the public or private organization and working for a short time <clears throat> uh, in health policy or health economic related uh, project and, and of course we we actively help students to find the uh, internship position we have a list of uh, partner organization whose student can do the, uh, their internships. So this, this partner uh, organization, including pharma companies, consultancy agency, and, but as a governmental organization and as a university department. Okay, and, and finally, uh, I would like to to present some activities outside the regular um, classes or regular program uh, so our department department of health policy is um, so responsible for the program and and uh, all, all all my colleagues are, are are teaching in the program those are my colleagues of the department um, besides teaching are also participating in various international and, and local research projects and uh, and our research portfolio covers a wide range of topics uh, um, in health policy and health economics uh, like quality of life research cost effectiveness budget impact analysis or economic modeling and and and, and students can can benefit uh, uh, from the interaction with with the, with the researchers of the department and and can participate in ongoing research project or analyzing uh, previously collected data, for example, related to their uh, master thesis. 
or 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 as a student can participate in in uh, scientific student competitions um, we have also uh, this competition uh, a section on health economics and health policy and students can also submit their uh, work in this uh, uh, competition um, Okay. Okay. So this was the the research competition, and, and and I see that we are we are after our time. So so this is this is my last uh, slide. It's just collected my colleagues who are somehow involved uh, uh, in the program as a specialization leader or or coordinator or internship uh, coordinator. So I hope you will. Uh, these slides will be shared with you and so you can find uh, our contacts and and please feel free to contact me if you have any question about the program so thank you uh, uh, for your attention and uh, so if you have any any question i am happy to answer thank you so much um i can only see one question right now so maybe uh we should take a look into that and we will try to uh, search for the uh ending of it as it's a shortened version as i can see okay Oh, as I oh so so if you are Hungarian if you have a Hungarian citizenship then then you can apply uh, through the Felvi Pont who so I, I think so the deadline is for you know the deadline for the international students but for as a as, a, as for the as, a, as other Hungarian uh, citizens. Yes, I believe so that uh, as a Hungarian citizen, you can uh, apply for any of our programs through uh, favi.hu and the deadline for that is somewhere uh, mid-February. So you should look after that uh, deadline exactly. Yes, this, this January 15th is, a, is a for, for foreign, foreign citizens. Yes, um, I cannot see any more questions concerning uh, the program itself. So uh, I believe uh, it's time to say uh, thank you uh, for okay. being here with us and uh, thank you for the opportunity. having the brief uh, presentation on the uh, health policy planning and financing. Uh, master's program and uh, now we are uh, moving on so uh, thank you so much once again for being uh, here and presenting okay goodbye thank you bye bye so um the next up is uh, Jofia Nemesh on behalf of Regional and Environmental Economic Studies Master's Program. So uh, thank you, Jofia, for joining. And the uh, stage is yours to say a few words about uh, the program. And after that, we will see if we have any questions that you uh, may answer. So uh, yeah. the stage is yours. <laughs> Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon or good evening everyone. Please just, could you please just confirm if I can be heard or and if the slides can be seen. I, I hope everything's working. I, I believe so. Uh, so yeah, my name is Rofia Namesh and today I'm representing the Institute of Sustainable Development, which is uh, the host institute of this master program called Regional and Environmental Economics. Uh, we, we have been launching this, uh, this program 
uh, first in a bilingual form. So we had it available in, in both in English and in Hungarian. Currently, it's uh, it's uh, only in English. And uh, during the next 10, uh, 15 minutes, I would like to uh, show you some pieces of information regarding our curriculum, regarding our professional mission, so to say. And in the end, if you have any happen to have any questions, of course, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. So about the regional and environmental economics master, uh, we have some key statements. First of all, we would like to, to highlight uh, whenever uh, we have the occasion to talk about the program. First of all, what we are trying to offer is economics from an interesting, alternative and a critical perspective. What does it mean? What do these three uh, adjectives mean here? We are focusing on environmental resources, sustainability and the economics of climate change. Plus, we also would like to add some uh, spatial dimension to, to all these. So a territorial approach, so to say, and uh, urban planning. So this is a complex program, as you can see, as you can understand, based on this double name, regional and environment, though. So there are two pillars of this master program. Um, and as a, as a consequence of these, uh, these uh, diverse uh, pillars, we also offer very diverse or once you have, once you so you get this degree, uh, it's also possible to find very diverse employment opportunities, including companies, municipalities, ministries. So the public sector, the governmental sector, international organizations, NGOs, and the list could be continued forever. Uh, and our students, our alumni community, um, is a good. Uh, proof of that, that they could find jobs in many, many fields starting ranging from urban development to environmental consulting firms and geopolitical analysis. So we have existing examples uh, for, for all these successful career paths. Uh, why? Because what we are trying to offer here is a practice oriented and innovative education. Uh, and here are some words about the quality uh, which what makes us different, what makes us di distinct is that our program is accredited by the Association of European Schools of Planning. And this is something unique because there is no other university in Hungary which shares this title. Our program is also ranked number 39 in the world uh, by the Edge Universal for a program related to sustainability and environmental management. So this is about the quality and about our applicants who can apply, who can be potentially accepted. We can say that applicants with very uh, diverse uh, bachelor or BSc background can be accepted. So um, uh, um, what I can say based on our current uh, first and second year students, their background, we have students who have previously studied history or English literature, but somehow they managed to collect the necessary amount of credits to get accepted. And thanks to the system of catching up courses, it is possible to, to help them, to assist them reach the, uh, the required level of economic uh, knowledge and uh, environmental economics related skills as well. I mentioned on the first slide that what we are trying to offer here is economics from an interesting or an alternative perspective. Uh, what we are primarily focusing on is, of course, sustainability, the, the concept of sustainability as a very complex, as a whole system, including the social, the economic and the environmental pillars of it. So we are trying to put equal emphasis on all these three pillars, all these three dimensions. The next slide you can see just, uh, it's not an exhaustive list, it's not a full list uh, of some subjects, areas and methodologies, what we include in our curriculum, which is, I can say, permanently being renewed, being modernized, being uh, slightly modified according to uh, to the, the new challenges and we are trying to reflect 
on, on what our students uh, would benefit the most from. So the subject areas and methodologies include here territorial analysis, local uh, economic development, regional development, urban planning, environmental management, corporate social responsibility, climate policies, and so on and so on. These are not necessarily subject names or course names or titles. This is just a list which is trying to, to show to anyone who's listening now or who's who's watching this live feed now, what are the major areas we try to cover by our curriculum? Uh, one more uh, slide about the job opportunities, which is always the number one uh, most exciting question uh, from the side of our students or the potential applicant. So once once again about the job opportunities, uh, by gaining a an MSc degree. Uh, in regional and environmental economics, you can get a Corvinus degree in economics, which is already a uh, something very solid uh, when it comes to to finding job opportunities. When it comes to the to the, the job market, either in Hungary or in other European countries, but even more. Uh, with this degree, you can find job in the public sector, as I mentioned before, including municipalities, ministries, organizations, and international organizations and NGOs. But uh, you have equal chances to find, uh, if you prefer that path, you have equal chances to find uh, a job opportunity in the business sector, including the multinational companies, small and medium-sized enterprises, consulting companies, and so on. And once more, there is a short list of fields, of areas, of jobs, uh, uh, employment opportunities, which you'd be eligible to once you have this, uh, this degree. And about the practice-oriented education, which is one more important aspect when it comes to, to the presentation of what we are doing here, what we're teaching here. So, uh, the practice-oriented um, portfolio or the practice-oriented dimension of our master is quite important because our professors are distinguished practitioners and experienced academics. Why we can say that? Most of our colleagues have experience in the non-academic sphere as well. So. Um, uh, ranging from uh, from uh, investment banks to 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 ministries, the most typical um, situation is that we have a colleague who who has already collected some quite valuable experience in one of these fields before joining the academia or doing the same the two things parallelly. Uh, also, what we try to add to increase this practice oriented nature or to to improve this practice oriented nature of our education is field exercises and internships uh, we always uh, encourage our students to to use these opportunities innovative teaching methodologies including the harvard method for example and the mentor teamwork we have a mentoring pro program and we always try to involve our students in research and project works uh, it depends on the, the character of the students, of course, uh, whether or not they are interested in such opportunities or continuing their studies on a PhD level. But uh, when there is an interest, when there is a determination, we are happy to, to provide the, the framework. We are happy to provide the professional background for it. And uh, one more time, the quality which makes us proud, the unique benefits of studying regional and environmental economics at Corvinus is this accreditation, which I already mentioned before, which is uh, which is something really unique. So once you have this degree in your hand, you, you can be sure about the international recognition of, uh, of this program at the same time. And the admission requirements for for finalizing this presentation. For admission to our program, you typically hold a degree, a bachelor degree uh, in, in economics, agriculture or business related studies, but we accept, as I mentioned before, but we accept applicants from many other academic backgrounds as well. Uh, so uh, our main principle is not to exclude anyone based on their uh, bachelor studies, 
once there is enthusiasm, once there is an interest in sustainability related uh, disciplines, and once we can see the uh, at least the minimum amount of credits from the previous studies, and once we can see the chance of catching up uh, to the to the same level of uh, of other to the level of uh, other students who had previously studied economics, for example, and for for final uh, this is these are just this is just a collage from uh, some photos from field trips showing that our um, classes are typically very diverse in uh, in cultural uh, ethnic religious etc so all in all these senses this is something which creates an extremely big value added so when it comes to to um, teamwork when it comes to project works uh, based on our experience, it has always been a great advantage for our both our Hungarian and non-Hungarian students to exist in a in a diverse, in a colorful environment. And uh, we have really good experience uh, concerning networking uh, and building our uh, quite live alumni community. So I think this was our last slide for today and for further information you can visit the website of the institute of sustainable development as well as our facebook and here are our contacts you can find my uh, contact my email there i am the program coordinator and we have a program instructor my colleague professor marton peti and we are happy to answer any questions uh, uh, in email as well so thank you very much Thank you so much for the presentation. And now it's uh, already um, already a bit uh, the end of our time. So uh, I guess we won't really have any questions as I uh, cannot really see any incoming ones right now. So thank you for sharing all the information and your contact details as well. So if uh, anyone watching has or will have any questions, uh, they can directly contact you. Or if we receive uh, any comments or any questions in the future, uh, we will make sure to uh, direct them to you to answer. So thank you so much uh, once again for joining us today and uh, have a nice rest of the evening. Thank you very much, you too. Thank you, bye. Thank you. Okay, um, now we are moving forward with uh, international accounting and auditing. And now I invite the uh, program director, Laszlo Peter Lakatos, to give his uh, presentation on the program itself. And after that, we will have uh, time to answer questions if there will be any incoming ones. So uh, welcome, Laszlo, and uh, the stage is yours. Uh, well, thank you, everybody. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Laszlo Peter Lakatos, and I'm here to uh, explain what are we planning uh, on international accounting and auditing. Well, this is a pretty new program. And when I'm saying that this is a pretty new program, I am talking about that this is the first time that we are actually going to deal with this. And this program was developed based on our previous experience uh, uh, on master programs uh, relating to accounting and audit. Now, uh, it's a very important thing to understand that this program actually is uh, structured around the following uh, ideas, so to say. Uh, after we kind of understood the market and understood this need of, need of the student, uh, we kind of decided that we would like to do something what is highly specialized. And when I would like to, when I'm talking about highly specialized, uh, it means that on this program, since this is going to be a one year master's, uh, we are not going to teach anything other than what I included in the name. Uh, so this is going to be accounting and audit, and basically that is going to fill up uh, both semesters. Uh, the program technically is on a quota basis, but uh, we can convert it to a, a semester base in any minute because actually uh, the subjects are coming after each other in a very logical way. And 
as I told you, uh, basically accounting and audit is going to be discussed. Now, uh, the other thing that we took into consideration and kept in mind uh, when we were dealing with this program and we were trying to design this program uh, was to uh, meet certain accreditation schemes. I'm pretty sure that if anybody is interested in international accounting and auditing, they already have some kind of accounting background. And they also understand that uh, once you learn this, once you study this uh, program, at the end of the day, you don't only want to get a university degree, but you want to get some kind of internationally recognized professional qualification. And um, that's the reason why we designed this course uh, around ACCA. Uh, ACCA is basically uh, the most important uh, accounting and auditing body, uh, which is internationally recognized. Of course, we have a lot of local bodies, but the international one is ACCA. Uh, so once completing this program, uh, what I can promise you that we are going to follow the path that the ACCA program actually set forth, uh, which means that at the end of uh, the two semesters, you are pretty much going to cover everything, what is needed uh, to become a professional accountant, not only recognized by your master's degree, but also recognized by a professional body, uh, which is uh, uh, actually what I already told, told uh, you, ACCA. Now, the other thing that we uh, had in mind when putting together this program was that we want to do something uh, which is which at the end of the second semester or the fourth quarter, I mean, it's the same thing. So at the end of the year, you can just stand up and go immediately and start working. So this is something what you can actually use in your real life. Uh, so this is how we design the program. And therefore, as I already told you, we will focus on audit and accounting and some very, 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 I mean, very tiny parts of the program is going to uh, include uh, other fields of knowledge. The other fields that we are going to include is finance and law, because, you know, we need to use them in order to be able to deal uh, with the accounting uh, questions as well. Uh, and two more things, which is not on the slide, uh, but uh, some of you might wonder if we are going to leave them out, but I will actually uh, tell you that, uh, but I'm actually going to uh, make you sure that we are not going to miss those. IT knowledge and taxation, but IT knowledge and taxation, you will need that actually they are going to be included in the accounting and in the audit subjects. Now, of course, uh, everything will not be fitting in one year. So basically, they, we designed this course to be extremely practical. So the theoretical aspects, although we are going to talk about them at some extent, are going to be very, very briefly presented. Now, uh, I brought here uh, a, a small summary of what we are going to be teaching here. So in order to have an idea about the program structure. Uh, so we will have courses supporting international accounting. So these are basically the methodology courses where you will be able to, uh, you know, either go back to your previous um, knowledge and, and brush up some of the accounting uh, knowledge that you should have to be able to complete this master and also some other accounting related issues like i don't know management control and these type of items are going to be included in there including it as i told you then we are going to have two huge blocks one of them is going to be international accounting and the other one is going to be international audit international accounting is going to be based on ifrs's since this course or this program is a Europe, we are going to be using IFRSs as a basis uh, of our teaching, uh, how shall I put it, our teaching material. Uh, and the other thing that we are going to be uh, using as a basis of our teaching material is going to be international audit. So how the audit is uh, done uh, all over the world. There are going to be some special and scientific knowledge items. And also, uh, if you are a track changer, which means that you don't really have uh, uh, too much background in accounting, and I will talk about this, what are we requiring in a minute. So you are coming from a university where you have at least one accounting subject, but you don't have all the knowledge that you think you are going to need to finish this, or we think that you're going to need to finish this uh, program, uh, there are going to be some subjects for the track changers. This is how we call it. Uh, it's not compulsory. It's only for those. 
uh, who are who actually need some additional, uh, you know, practice to start a program. And at the end of the program, you are going to be required to put together a so-called project. So we are not going to have a thesis work of any kind. But uh, on this program, we thought that it's going to be more uh, important to have a project that you are going to be working on. So you need to do something at the end of the day. Uh, now let me be a little bit more detailed. Uh, what kind of courses am I talking about here? So what are we teaching? Uh, regarding the courses supporting international accounting, this is what you will actually get. So we will take a look at management control and performance management, advanced financial management. Uh, we will actually look at the low part uh, of, uh, of our, our profession, which will include corporate and civil law. Uh, then we will look at financial and non-financial reporting in uh, general. And also, uh, there are going to be, you see that two of the lines are doubled there. The reason for that, because depending on which area you came from, you will take either the first version or the second version. So there is going to be one for those who are so-called track changers, and there is going to be another version of the class who is for the already uh, perf uh, already experienced uh, ones. Uh, then the next uh, block, what we are going to be teaching is uh, international accounting. Only two subjects are going to be here, but don't uh, get mistaken, these are massive courses. One of them is advanced financial accounting and the second one is international accounting. Actually, there is no big surprises over there. We are going to be dealing with accounting and we are going to be going really in the depth of it. Um, then international audits. We will take a look at the audit and assurance uh, services. So what kind of audit rules we need to apply and we are going to actually teach you it, teach you this in a practical way. Uh, this is all going to be done on case study basis. Uh, the same thing is actually true. I just forgot to mention the same thing is also going to be true for the international accounting uh, um, courses. And also we are going to take a look at the advanced assurance and professional oversight uh, kind of engagements. So basically, I think this is uh, this is the only program uh, I know, and actually uh, that only in Hungary, but basically I dare to say that worldwide, which is also not only dealing with audit, but it is also dealing with other assurance services. And we are going to be teaching you that subject as well. Now, regarding the methodological part, uh, this is going to be technically the part of the accounting classes. Uh, IT is going to be an essential part uh, of the curriculum. One of them is going to be accounting information systems. So we will see what kind of information systems are used for the accounting activities and what is going to be happening, uh, what is going to be aiding audits. So computer-aided audit, uh, auditing techniques are also going to be introduced during the course. And as I told you, this is a one-year program. So there is not much room for making choices here. Because within one year, we have an idea what, where we want to arrive. We want you to be a professional who can, you know, stand up at the end of the studies, can go out there and start working immediately. So only we, we only have one elective course. So out of these four things, you are only going to be required to choose one. You can either choose taxation, which is going to be international uh, taxation. You can either choose strategy and leadership. If you are more theoretical focus, then you can choose uh, accounting research. And if you are more uh, into numbers and dealing with statistics, then you can actually study um, advanced statistical methods. So basically, this is the program structure. And there is one more thing I would like to highlight. And this is that for the track changers. And I will talk about what is the prerequisite to enter into this uh, program uh, for those who think that they are eligible to join the program but we still feel like that there are some things missing uh, two courses are going to be required one of them is going to be the so-called accountant in business so basically these are going to be the revision of the accounting skills and economics for accountants so if you feel that uh, you don't have enough uh, economic related uh, subjects, then we are going to require you or ask you to uh, 
take that course. And now let's go to the prerequisite because this is probably one of the most important questions. Uh, now, the first thing that most Corvinus business degrees are going to be accepted. I, I shouldn't say most because basically all of those uh, Corvinus degrees, which are business related, are going to be accepted. Uh, so you can come. What we really do need over here, we need two accounting related classes in your history. So when we will look at who is eligible for the course and who is not oh, sorry for the program or who is not eligible for the course, for the program again, uh, what we are going to be looking at, we are looking at your transcript and we see if you have studied at least two accounting related courses. If you did study two, then you are going to be fine. OK, uh, if you only studied one, you still can be fine. We will take a look at what have you studied, but we will probably require you to take accountant in business to make sure that we are going to be on the same level. So to be totally honest, we don't have too much prerequisites. So basically, if you are coming from somewhere where you had at least one accounting class, you should be fine, all right? Maybe we will ask you to do the track changer courses, but that one is doable within the year. Uh, what I usually tell everybody that if you want to join a program like this, probably you will know that you are interested in this or no, because accounting and audit is a very, very specialized uh, field. So most of the people who choose this are already know that this is what they want to do. So there are not going to be big surprises in my understanding. Uh, also, it is very important, and this is what I wanted to tell you a second ago, that the most important thing that you should be okay with numbers. If you are okay with numbers, uh, and if you are okay with working with numbers, you shouldn't actually be, uh, you shouldn't actually have too much problem. All right, and uh, why us? So why do we think that this is something what you guys should uh, apply for? And the first thing, and I think that this is probably the most important thing that we can give you, uh, this is a knowledge that we are providing, which is uh, worldwide known, yeah, worldwide accepted. And this is something that everybody is using the same way. So in my understanding and in our understanding, uh, this is something what uh, actually can contribute to your professional future. Uh, it's something that if you study this, you should know that you are going to be able to use it. OK, and the program is also very structured. So we don't want it's not a fancy several choices type of program, but it's very structured. You need to follow what we want you to study. Yeah. So you don't have too many choices. But this that but this structure is put together to uh, get to the goal that after one year you can either start working as an auditor or start working as somebody who is dealing with the finance or accounting uh, function of a company. Uh, probably one of the most important message for those who are similar to me, who wants to know what is going to happen in the future. I don't like uncertainty. I need to know if I do this program, what is going to happen with me. Now, for them, I have a good news. Uh, after completing this program, uh, you will have a clear future. Yeah. So you know what are you going to be able to do with this? As I already mentioned, you can either be an auditor, you can work as a CFO or something similar. Probably at the first few years, you're not going to be a CFO, but you will get there uh, in one or two years. So that's something what is actually a possible uh, role for those who completed this program. You can be a business owner, small or large, you choose it. So uh, this actually will make you eligible and it will make you, you know, prepared uh, to run a business. Uh, uh, or you can be a chief accountant uh, if this is what you would like to do in your life. So all these things, in my understanding, are very clear. So this is what we are promising, that these are the possible paths that you are going to be able to take. And one of the important message I would like to uh, add here uh, is uh, 
that uh, what we are, uh, we are in the process to accreditate this program with ACCA. Anybody who is in the field of accounting will know these four letters next to each other. So what is the meaning of ACCA? I already mentioned that this is the professional body, which is the most well-known all over the world. And what our aim is, and probably I am pretty sure that we are going to be succeeding, that by the start of the program, which is in September, uh, we would like to get basically all of our subjects accredited. So if you find, finish this program, then it will mean that you that ACCA have 14 exams. Out of these 14 exams, nine can be exempted. And the goal is that that nine exemptions you are going to get. So at the end of the day, you only need to take five exams instead of the uh, 14. So, and then at the end of the day, you will not only get a university degree, but you also will get a professional qualification. So in a nutshell, uh, this is what we are promising. This is what we are proposing. Uh, we really do think that this is something what I would call a very practical uh, program. And anybody who is interested in accounting and uh, who is actually uh, interested in uh, these type of professions should really apply and I think that we are going to be a good fit for them. Now regarding the English language requirement, obviously this program is going to be in English, so uh, you should be able to speak English, uh, but don't get frightened. Um, at the same time, this is a free language course because if you don't know the English uh, word for the accounting profession, don't, don't be worried. After a few weeks, you are going to be totally okay with it. That's that's something what we uh, realized in the past. So this is it in a nutshell. And if you have any question, I am more than happy to answer it. Thank you so much, Laszlo, for the in-depth introduction uh, to this uh, pretty new uh, course or program that we offer here at uh, Corvinus. Um, we have quite a usual question uh, that may be interesting in this case as well. Uh, how flexible uh, is the schedule uh, for students to allow them to work besides studying? Okay, uh, so as I told you that we wanted to understand the market. And one of the things that we realized that usually people who are working in accounted already starting their professional uh, journey very early, sometimes when they are less than 20. And uh, I think that this is actually something that is not a bad thing in this program. So we will design this uh, program in order to be able to work at least part time next to this. So the idea is that we are going to block the courses uh, together and also it's going to be work-friendly hours when we are going to be teaching. Of course, I'm not saying it's easy uh, because when you are studying and at the same time you are working, of course, you need to find a time <laughs> when you are studying. It takes a year. I'm not saying that this one year is going to be easy, but it's going to be totally manageable. So it's flexible enough to be able to work at the same time. Okay, perfect. Thank you for the answer. Uh, I have actually one more question about the international opportunities. As we have quite no experience with this program before, um, uh, is it expected to be something like uh, with the accounting or finance masters? Uh, so the opportunities will be uh, similar to those uh, master programs. Yes, what I would say that uh, in a one year program, it's very hard to travel abroad. You can go abroad because uh, uh, it's a one year program. I mean, if you include a year, an Erasmus semester, obviously you will lose a full year because uh, you need to wait until the next semester is starting again. But uh, in terms of international uh, aspect of this program, uh, if you study this, you can be an accountant anywhere. So this will mean that, well, not anywhere, but whoever is using international accounting, and this is where most of our students are going. So Europe, yes, everywhere, basically. Northern America, everywhere. Most part of Asia, everywhere. Perfectly clear. Thank you so much. Um, actually, I cannot see any more uh, questions.
questions. Um, so if you would like to add anything else, um, we still have a few minutes um, for that. If, if anything just comes to mind. I think I told you everything. And one more thing, I forgot to give you my email address, uh, but I will upload a new slide uh, deck and I, you will have my email there. And if you have any questions, it's free feel to reach out. Uh, anybody who is thinking what I would like to have, anybody who is thinking about, uh, you know, doing something in accounting and who is interested working internationally or working for a multinational company, I think this is the program designed for them. So that's my main message here. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you so much. Oh, actually, uh, I just received a question. Uh, so um, maybe we should uh, go on with that, if it's okay with you. Uh, why we are... Um, okay, so... No, we've covered everything in the presentation show. So uh, really, thank you so much <laughs> for uh, being uh, here with us. And uh, shortly, we will move forward uh, with the next uh, program. So once again, thank you so much for uh, being here and for all the information you've shared uh, recently. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. So within a few moments, we will uh, move forward with uh, a Hungarian course that will be uh, held in uh, Hungarian language once again, uh, similarly to the first two uh, master's uh, programs. And uh, while waiting for a few minutes, uh, I advise everyone watching uh, to follow our social media sites, to be uh, prepared all the time. We post all the important details, all the important uh, deadlines concerning the application process, uh, all the information for the uh, admission timing. And uh, please do visit our website uh, to get the detailed descriptions for uh, each and every one of our uh, master's programs and uh, the criteria uh, which uh, everyone needs to uh, fulfill to be able to get enrollment. So we will come back just in a few moments and uh, we'll ask for your patience till then. Thank you.
We are here once again and moving forward with the rest of the master's programs that we can offer to uh, the interested parties. So uh, the next one will be actually in Hungarian. So let me just switch quickly uh, for the next one to Hungarian. Szóval a következőkben a közgazdásztanár mesterszakunkat uh, fogja bemutatni a szaknak a felelőse Daruka Magdolna, úgyhogy a következőkben uh, szeretném felkérni uh, Daruka Magdolnát, hogy tartsa meg a prezentációját, és hogyha lenne kérdés, akkor a végén ezekre is sor tudunk keríteni, és uh, tudunk arról beszélgetni egy kicsit, úgyhogy át is adom a szót. Köszönöm a szót. Szeretném a közgazdász tanárszakot bemutatni. Szeretettel üdvözlök mindenkit, aki esetleg itt van és érdeklődik a tanárszakunk iránt. A közgazdász tanárszakunk az már régóta... Egy pillanatra... Egy pillanat? Légy szíves, hogy hogy lépek innen tovább. Jó, megvan, jó, megvan. Jó, tehát a, bocsánat, a közgazdász tanárszakunk az... Jó régóta van már az egyetemen, gyakorlatilag 1920 óta zajlik, sokszor változik, valamelyest módosul, de alapvető célunk az, hogy a középfokú közgazdasági szakképzésbe, gazdasági szakképzésekbe közgazdász végzettségű tanárokat tudjunk képezni. Különböző szakirányokba képezünk, ilyen a elméleti közgazdasági tárgyakra képezzük a kollégákat, pénzügyi számvitel szakirányunk van, ügyvitel szakirányunk van, vendéglátás, idegenforgalmi, kereskedelem, marketing szakirány és vállalkozási ismertek szakirány. Legutóbb az elmúlt tanévben változott, tanév végén változott, most egy új logika szerint megyünk, az új körülményeknek megfelelően próbáljuk a közgazdásztanár végzést megcsinálni. Elvileg a képzés sok területre képez. Ugye az elsődleges, amit mondtam, az a szakközépiskolai technikumi iskola rendszerű, illetve a munkaerőpiaci képzések iskola rendszeren kívüli oktatására készítenek fel. Gyakorlatilag a szakmai edzékekben jelennek meg azok a szakirányok, szakmák, amire mi, ahol mi megjelenünk, mint oktatók. Ott derülnek ki, hogy milyen tárgyaink vannak a középiskolai technikumi körülmények között, illetve a munkaerőpiaci képzések között. A nálunk végzett szakemberek egy jelentős része nem a középfokú szakképzésbe helyezkedik el, hanem a vállalatoknál, különböző vállalatoknál a HR folyamatok támogatására, belső képzések kialakítására, mentorálására, tehetséggondozására nálunk készülnek fel. Tehát különböző tárgyaink segítik ezt a típusú feladatvégzést is. Az utóbbi években nagyon sok ilyen nemzetközi vállalatoknál dolgozó kollega jelentkezett hozzánk. Ilyen elsődleges célból, hogy, hogy ilyen feladatokat vállalati HR folyamatokba kapcsolódjanak bele. Jellemző az is, hogy újabban az utolsó, az elmúlt, ebben a tanévben megjelent egy olyan fajta igény is a tanár, közgazdász tanár képzésben, hogy a felsőoktatási intézményekben sok olyan kollega tanít, aki nem rendelkezik tanári végzettséggel, és a feladatok jellege úgy változott meg az oktatás ökoszisztémájának változása miatt, hogy egyre inkább kéri a tanári végzettséget, ezért a felsőoktatási sajátosságokra is képezünk, Jellemző az, hogy a, az oktatásunk az alapvetően olyanoknak szól, akik már mesterképzéssel rendelkeznek, és már meglévő mesterdiploma birtokában szeretnének tanári végzettséget szerezni, tehát a felnőtteknek át- és továbbképzésére fókuszálunk az oktatás során. Alapvetően a, képzéseink, a képzésünk arra is jó, hogy ilyen pedagógiai, kutatási feladatokra készítsen fel, tervezési, fejlesztési feladatokra, illetve doktori képzésre. A képzésünkben jellemző az, hogy kettő vagy négy fél évves a képzés, a bemenettől függően. A következő tanévben mi egyet, egy területre, tehát egyiket hirdetjük csak meg, a kétfél éves képzést, a kétfél éves képzésből is kétféle lehet. Az egyik kétfél éves képzésünk az olyan, ahol megvan valakinek már a közgazdász mesterszakos diplomája, és ehhez szeretne tanári jellegű tárgyakat, tanári végzettséget megszerezni. 
Ezt a, ezt a szakot fogjuk meghirdetni most a következő tanévre. Elvileg lehetne olyan két éves képzésünk, ahol már meglévő tanárszak birtokában adjuk meg a közgazdasági végzettséget, ez ebben a tanévben nem fog indulni. A négyféleves képzésünket sem indítjuk, elvileg oda alapképzéses hallgatók léphetnek be az alapképzés elvégzése iránt. A különböző tárgyaink alapvetően három nagy témakört ölelnek fel. Az egyik ilyen nagy témakör a, a pedagógia, pszichológiai tárgyaknak a kör, ö, köre, ide tartoznak a neveléstudomány alapozó projektek, személyiségfejlesztési projektek, alkalmazott szociálpszichológiai projektek, ö, iskolai társadalmi kör, ö, környezeti projektek, jellemzően a másik nagy területet jelentik a, a módszertani tantárcsoportok, ide tartoznak a, a, a tanulásról, valott nézetek fejlődése, ide tartoznak az, hogy mit jelentenek a tanulási eredmény alapú szemlélet, hogyan tervezünk meg a tanulói aktivitásokat, hogyan lehet a tanulási eredményeket, tanulói tevékenységeket, értékelési rendszereket összehangolni, hol lehet mérés, értékelési lépéseket beírtatni, hogyan mérjünk egyáltalán, tehát vannak módszertani kurzusok, és a harmadik nagy terület, amikor a hallgatóink kimennek az oktatási intézményekben, és ott iskolai gyakorlaton vesznek részt. Itt az iskolai gyakorlaton egyrészt megismerkednek az iskolai környezettel, az adott iskolával, az ott iskolában folyó pedagógiai szaktanári folyamatokkal, illetve hospitálnak órákon, és nem csak hogy hospitálnak, hanem órákat is tartanak, és ezen a vezető tanár, mentor tanár segítségével mennek végig ezen a folyamaton. Alapvetően a felvételivel kapcsolatban azt szeretném elmondani, hogy szóbeli és alkalmassági vizsga van, ezek egy időben mennek végbe. A szóbeli vizsgán alapvetően azt mérjük, hogy a jelöltnek milyen az intellektuális potenciája, mennyire jellemző rá a kritikus gondolkodás. Ez a szerezhető összpontszámnak, a 30, tehát az egy harmada, 30 pont, a másik nagy rész, ami a szóbeli vizsgán mérésre kerül a felvételén, a pedagógiai, pedagógiai problémák iránti nyitottság, multikulturális környezetben kell ma már tanítanunk, ezért mérjük majd azt, hogy milyen a rátermettsége a jelöltnek, illetve a személyközi képességei milyenek. Ennek is 30 pont a szerezhető pont, illetve a harmadik ilyen nagy terület, a motiváció, teljesítmény, elérésére való igény, ez a másik 30 pont. Ezeket a kompetenciákat, képességeket különböző feladatokon keresztül fogjuk mérni, valamilyen esetet mutatunk be, aminek a segítségével elkezdjük a beszélgetést, és a beszélgetés mentén, mentén térünk ki majd ezekre a területekre. A másik vizsga, ami a szóvelivel együtt egy időpontban van, az alkalmas, alkalmassági vizsga. Itt ilyen kérdésekre keressük a, a Választ, hogy milyen ismeretei vannak a felvételizőnek a, pály, a tanári pályáról, milyen pályaképe van, ő maga hogyan gondolkozik arról, hogy milyen szerepet tölt be a tanára tanítási tanulási folyamatról, milyen személyes motivációi vannak, amiért ide jelentkezik, mennyire tud kommunikálni, milyen pedagógiai elképzelései vannak. Itt is szituáció, pedagógiai szituációk lesznek, és ezek segítségével mérjük fel a problémaérzékenységet, azokat a jellemzőket, ami a tanári pályához szükséges, milyen az általános tájékozottsága jelenlegi oktatási rendszerről, körülményekről, pedagógia általános kérdéseiről. Itt nem kap a jelölt pontszámot, hanem kétféle minősítést, hogy megfelelt, nem felelt meg és a 90 ponthoz még kerül 10 pont, ami a hozott eredményei alapján kerül be a pontszámításba. Néhány dolgot szeretnék kiemelni, amiért hallgatóink szeretik ezt a, a képzést. Egyrészt tanulóközpontú, hallgatóközpontú tanulási környezetet teremtünk, viszonylag kis létszámmal szoktunk menni, ezért nagyon személyes kapcsolat alakul ki az oktató és a hallgatók között. A legkorszerűbb módszereket igyekszünk használni, bemutatni, megtanítani, ugyanígy az értékelési oldalról is. Tehát az oktatóink a, ezekből a témákból, amiket az előbb felsoroltam, 
korszerű ismeretekkel rendelkeznek, ezeket viszik be a tantermi órákba, és még a, a pszichológiai órákon is módszertanokat fognak megtanulni a jelentkezők. Igyekszünk, amiért szeretnek bennünket, amiért sokan szoktak ide jelentkezni, az az, hogy nagy hangsúlyt fektetünk a képzés során arra, hogy az oktatásban milyen korosztály van jelen, milyen generációk jelennek meg a nappali esti levelező képzéseken, ezeknek a generációknak a tanulását, tanulási preferenciáit mi jellemzi, és ezt figyelembe véve milyen tanulási környezeteket érdemes kialakítani, milyen módszertani eszköztárral érdemes dolgozni. Megtanítjuk a kollégákat arra, hogy mit jelent a co-teaching, hogyan működhet ez, hogyan lehet ezt hatékonyabbá tenni. Az oktatásunknak nagyon fontos jellemzője, hogy nagyon sok IKT eszközt integrálunk a tanítási tanulási folyamatba, megtanítjuk a jelentkezőket, tulajdonképpen a potenciális kollégáinkat arra, hogy ezeket az, eszközök, ezeket az eszközöket hogyan lehet pedagógiai szempontokat figyelembe véve alkalmazni a mindennapi tanítási tanulási folyamatba, hogy hatékonyabbá tegye a tanulási folyamatot, a hallgatók, el, tanulók elkötelezését, motivációt fent tudja tartani. Jellemzően nagyon erős a kapcsolati háló, ami kialakul itt a képzés során. A, mond, említettem, hogy nagyon személyes az oktató-hallgató közötti kapcsolat. A hallgatók éveken keresztül visszajárnak, kérdeznek, meghívnak bennünket, tehát nagyon jó kapcsolatunk van. Támogatjuk egymást, segítjük egymást, nagyon sokszor mi is fordulunk kutatások során hozzájuk, illetve kérjük őket, az észrevét, kérjük az észrevételeiket. Tehát gyakorlatilag a, a, egy ilyen munkakapcsolat alakul ki a képzés során, és általában nagyon jó a kapcsolat azokon az iskolákkal is, ahol a hallgatóink a gyakorlatot töltik. Itt is tartósak ezek a kapcsolatok. Azt, fog, azt mondhatnánk, és nem akarom, hogy ez nagyképűen hangzon, de igaznak tűnik, hogy jól használható valódi értéket teremt, teremtő és valódi érték, értéket jelentő képzést tudunk adni itt ezen a, a szakon. Hát ez egy kicsit kicsit néhány adatot hoztam arra, hogy, hogy a közgazdásztanás szakot hogyan ítélik meg a volt hallgatóink. Itt ezeket a felméréseket a képzések végén szoktuk megcsinálni, és csak azért emeltem ide ezt a táblát, vagy ezt az ábrát, hogy lássuk azt, hogy szemléltessem is azt, amit az előbb elmondtam, hogy, hogy szeretik ezt a szakot, hasznosnak tartják ezt a szakot, látják, hogy az értékeléseink igen magasak. Megnéztem most, is, most azt is, hogy a elmúlt fél évben hogyan értékelték a hallgatók a tanárainkat, és általában 4,7 és 5-ös közötti hallgatói értékeléssel dicsekedhetünk. Tehát ez is egy olyan jellemzője a képzésnek, amivel szeretnénk Önöket megfogni és ide hívni. Nagyon köszönöm a, a figyelmet, és várom a kérdéseket, hogyha van valakinek kérdése. Köszönjük szépen a bemutató előadást, a prezentációt. Jelenleg én nem látok kérdést. Azt hiszem, hogy egy kellően átfogó képet kaptunk, hogy a, a legtöbb területet, ami, ami mondjuk kérdésként is felmerült eddig, azokat megválaszoltnak tudhassuk. Úgyhogy szerintem akkor köszönjük szépen még egyszer, hogy itt volt ma velünk, és hogy bemutatta a közgazdásztanás szakot, és akkor még a maradék két mesterszakunkkal pedig mennénk tovább a, a zónán nyílt nap keretében. Úgyhogy köszönjük szépen még egyszer a részvételt és a segítséget. Köszönöm a lehetőséget, és köszönöm én is a segítséget, amit kaptam is a So now switching back to English uh, for the rest of the uh, online uh, master's open day. Um, we have two more master's program at Corvinus that we haven't heard about. So now uh, moving forward with the uh, international studies, now we welcome uh, program director Bernadette Judith Lehotsky who will be talking about the uh, International Studies Masters. And uh, we will hear the presentation. We will hear and see the presentation. And uh, after that, there will be 
place for uh, comments and uh, questions. And we will we'll see uh, if uh, we receive any. Uh, if not, uh, we will always have uh, something in mind uh, that are the most common ones. So uh, no worries at all. So the stage is uh, for Bernadette and thank you for being uh, here with us today. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, the introduction. Um, as you have heard, my name is Bernadette Lehotsky. I work as an associate professor for the Department of International Relations and Corvinus. And, uh, and now I, I'm planning to give you a brief uh, introduction of our MA in um, International uh, Relations. Um, so basically, I would start with that um, we uh, consider ourselves to be market leaders in uh, Hungary in this uh, field uh, for various reasons. Uh, first of all, uh, this is the oldest uh, international relations program in Hungary. I mean, Corvinus had uh, the very first uh, program in this uh, discipline. And uh, basically, uh, the launch uh, of uh, it was, goes back to 1963. Uh, in the first decades until the transition in Hungary, basically this university trained diplomats uh, for uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. So that's why uh, we have well-established relations till today uh, with the various ministries in Hungary. But after the transition, and especially since our um, joining to the European Union in 2004, uh, we have had more and more uh, emerging contacts with international organizations and international uh, NGOs. Uh, beyond that, we have a BA program in international relations and also uh, international relations, multidisciplinary doctoral schools. So basically, we have a full range of uh, programs. Uh, beyond that, still uh, sticking to this market uh, leader position, uh, our staff and our professors uh, basically publish uh, in uh, international journals and also in edited volume on a regular basis. So I can say that we as um, an academic community, uh, we are really part of international uh, networking and uh, research. What is the aim of the program? So uh, what do we want to achieve by the end of the second year? Uh, basically, our primary goal is to train experts in international relations with uh, high level analytical skills. Um, and beyond that, it's very important to uh, equip our students with skills to be able to work in an international uh, environment because we expect a uh, majority of our students to, um, to go um, uh, abroad after uh, graduation. So now I would go on with some details about the renewal of our MA program because during last year we have um, basically went through um, uh, a renewal process, okay, uh, which resulted in uh, new contents and um, and also a new structure of our program. Uh, now we have the first year students who started um, last uh, September. And basically we worked on the basis of uh, our alumni students feedback. Uh, and also we checked international best practices uh, regarding uh, MA programs uh, in international relations all around 
the world. So one of our achievements or primary goal was uh, to decrease the number of uh, courses in general and especially the number of um, core courses uh, because we believe that international relations as a discipline is going through very essential changes today because more and more global issues uh, are involved and covered uh, by international relations. Uh, so basically, we felt like being uh, pushed towards, you know, the inclusion of various uh, topics beyond strictly state-to-state -state relations. So uh, instead of specializations, we rather created uh, blocks with a wide range of uh, core elective uh, courses because uh, our goal was to support students to study uh, those questions in IR they are especially interested in uh, and we really want to offer a wide range of uh, topics to choose uh, from. Uh, beyond that, we attempt to put more emphasis on methodology as basically an MA program um, prepares students uh, a possible for a possible uh, academic uh, career, and also for analytical skills, it's quite important uh, to have the essentials of IR methodology. And beyond that, uh, we also uh, improved the economic aspects of um, our courses and uh, try to, to we try to enrich the content with uh, more reference to the economic background of uh, state behavior and also uh, international uh, conflict so basically uh, we have been adjusting the program to recent developments in international relations as uh, as a discipline and um, and we we really try to do our best to um, keep changing the contents year by year in order to reflect on contemporary issues um, uh, such as new conflicts, new leaders, or new alliances in the world. So basically, the program is rather a framework, you know, to, to fill with a constantly changing uh, content. So here you can see basically the, the majority of the courses uh, offered. Of course, it's available at Corvinus uh, homepage you can find all the details about uh, uh, the quarters um, basically this is a quarter based ma program which uh, means that uh, we have a seven week quite intense um, study periods where students have two or maximum three courses uh, in a quarter so they are really forced you know to 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 concentrate and to focus on those uh low number of courses and uh, based on the experiences of the first semester we can see that uh, basically it works in the sense that students really enjoy not having 10 courses parallelly but they really uh, have the chance to get into details and have a deeper understanding of uh, the most important uh, topics in, um, in the courses. Uh, right, uh, most typically these core elective blocks I have mentioned, usually students have the chance to choose two out of four uh, courses. And, um, and basically, it's, um, 
we consider it a, it a good solution uh, because our students have typically quite different backgrounds from their BA studies. So basically those students who have a background on international law or a background of international economics, they can uh, go on with these interests and they can pick those uh, courses that uh, fit into their previous studies or on the other hand if they rather prefer to uh, to go after new topics they can also uh, choose uh, from uh, from new uh, questions so uh, why is international relations ma at corvinus um, a good choice uh, basically, we really do a lot to organize uh, off-classroom programs for our students because we believe that it's really important to give the chance to our students to meet uh, diplomats, to, to meet uh, figures from uh, international organizations or the civil uh, sector, because they have to be well prepared when starting their uh, career uh, and know exactly what uh, these actors do. Here you can see in the pic um, the visit of the ex-Secretary General of the United Nations, uh, Ban Ki-moon, uh, at Corvinus some um, years ago. So we really try to build relations uh, with, um, with actors in international diplomacy, uh, invite them uh, and, uh, and give them the opportunity to, to give lectures or, or workshops for our students. Uh, what students do we uh, expect or uh, um, what are the skills students should have when entering uh, the program? Uh, I would emphasize that um, in this field, students really have to be rather open-minded, uh, open towards different uh, cultures, open towards conflicts in other parts of the world. And, uh, and there must be um, an objective uh, approach or they must have an ob objective approach towards international actors. So we, we really uh, attempt to, to teach the students uh, not to uh, judge international actors, rather to understand their choices and their uh, behavior, because finally uh, it uh, rather brings us to closer to solution of international conflict and, and towards uh, cooperation. Uh, beyond that, uh, we, we really hope to have students who go after international news, who are excited about what's going on in the world, and, and they really uh, want to understand the motives and ambitions of, um, of various uh, actors. It's very important to see that although international relations traditionally was a discipline that examines state-to-state -state relations, as I've mentioned before, but by today, uh, it really goes well beyond uh, international links. And it's not only about states, but we have a rising number of uh, actors and face a much more complex word so that's why we have to open up towards new questions and phenomena like migration terrorism environmental uh, issues um, or um, identity in um, in foreign affairs 
Right. Um, and at last, but uh, not at least, I would like to reflect on uh, career opportunities after uh, graduation. So uh, there is a kind of a misleading uh, interpretation or understanding of IR as it, it's a discipline or a program that trains diplomats. I mean, partly, yes, of course, it's it's true. And as I've mentioned, we used to train basically diplomats for uh, um, for Hungary, but but today the world has changed a lot. So basically, we can see, and uh, that's uh, that's that's uh, that's what we can see with contacts with our alumni students that uh, they really have a wide range of uh, choices after graduation. So, of course, they can uh, work for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of their country of origin. Uh, but beyond that, uh, many of our students go to work to, for international organizations um, representing their country or uh, being, you know, the staff of um, of the given organization. Um, meanwhile, we can uh, see that beyond public administration and international career, uh, many of our students uh, start to work in uh, the private sector, and basically they go to uh, companies uh, because. Uh, foreign uh, relations of uh, multinational companies are more and more important. So in many cases, uh, these uh, companies have distinct uh, organizational units to tackle uh, affairs that are closely linked to IR and they need experts on, um, on international uh, relations. So basically, uh, we do not have a very obvious uh, career path. Uh, we rather offer the choice to, uh, to, for students to find their way after uh, graduation and the rising number of actors in international affairs, of course, um, reinforces these wide uh, range of uh, choices. It contributes to uh, the widening opportunities, career opportunities for uh, IR students. So uh, I think I must finish uh, now. Uh, sorry if I've been a bit too long. And uh, please, if you have any questions, just uh, do not hesitate to ask. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your presentation. I believe we are just on time, uh, actually. And uh, I do think that uh, all the topics and areas uh, you successfully covered in your presentation uh, that we had uh, previously uh, questions about. So uh, that's a quite good point, and I cannot even see uh, any more questions uh, concerning the program. So uh, if you don't have anything to add, um, I should say that uh, we can move forward to the uh, last program introduction of uh, today's event. And I would like to thank you for uh, introducing the uh, International <laughs> Studies program. And uh, if uh, any questions uh, will arrive in the future, uh, either uh, via comments or uh, in written form, uh, we make sure to forward them uh, to you or uh, the other colleagues and uh, we will get a reply uh, as soon and as precisely as possible. Okay, thank you so much. Have a nice afternoon or evening. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
So, okay, uh, we are shortly coming to the end of our uh, online open day for the uh, Corvinus Masters programs. But before concluding the event, uh, we have one more uh, Masters uh, about uh, communication and media science. And we have uh, Anta Santa here, the program director for uh, the relevant uh, communication and media science mm -hmm. uh, masters so yes, uh, i would like to give i would like to give the stage uh to mr anta santay and uh, thank you for being with us here today so uh please start your presentation about the program mm -hmm. okay thank you chanat uh, uh, hello everybody it's a bit uh, hard to catch up after professor lehotsky's uh, excellent presentation about the such a established traditional program like the international relations study uh, communication and media science is probably the youngest of social sciences but uh, as you, if you think on on uh, artificial intelligence for instance nowadays then you can imagine that uh, this is the future and the future is now, so that's my best argument to turn uh, towards this uh, program and uh, uh, consider to continue your studies in, at the Corvinus University in the Communication and Media Studies Masters. Um, I'm the program director and uh, I show you some slides about student services, I skip this because this is probably the uh, organization within the university which you already contacted and you will continue to contact also during your application and admission. The uh, program belongs to the Institute of uh, uh, Marketing and Communication and within that the Department of Communication and media. The director of the institute is Professor Tomás Gyulavári and the head of department is Professor Réka Bences. Uh, main building uh, here at the university. Uh, probably all of you are aware of all the application deadlines. The, uh, I, I think here now uh, we have mostly uh, applicants uh, through the FELVI, so they have still some days, weeks to consider and uh, make the choices. And if we will have some uh, international self-funded applicants, then they have plenty of time till June to make the application. Uh, so uh, about admission, you are probably better informed from the uh, relevant uh, 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 student services or uh, admission office. I don't go in details. We have uh, no interviews anymore as we had before, but only the international test and the other uh, uh, and try. So what is uh, uh, an important point uh, to choose uh, communication and media at Corvinus is that uh, it uh, uh, accepts uh, applicants from very, very different fields, so much more wider selection than most of the other programs of the university, namely uh, a direct entrance is possible certainly from the communication and media BA, but we can, we accept also uh, graduates from liberal arts, economic sciences, low IT arts, art communication, and different social science fields. The only thing is if you are not coming directly from communication and media BA, then you have to show 30 credits uh, from very different fields or from one of these fields, depends. So as you see, I don't list all the possibilities, but it's really a wide range. So we have also many applicants and students admitted students from uh, philosophical faculties or uh, or art universities or whatever. So this 
which is, I think, a very important for, point for applicants to consider to get a diploma at Corvinus University. The program, the study program, uh, has different parts. The main uh, parties are the core courses, altogether 68 credits, and we have uh, two specializations, uh, each uh, 40 credits and some elective courses. This is 120 credits program, which means uh, two years for semester program. We still have the traditional uh, semester of like the international relations. So the specializations too, uh, we have international communication, which uh, uh, is uh, uh, preparing students more for international organizations, any kind, business, uh, NGO or even political, if you like, or uh, international uh, business organizations, as I mentioned, the political communication. The other specialization is more journalism or, or generally media uh, and uh, politics related communication. As you see, the specialization is not the biggest part of the study. So if you are not uh, specifically interested in any of these or or you are not uh, sure about which specialization to choose you still can start this program uh, specialization means actually four uh, uh, five credit courses all together in the second year uh, the uh, other point here in the program is the internship, uh, not only a possibility, but uh, obligation, 90 hours in a relevant uh, job at any company, it can be also abroad or in Hungary. Uh, we have many, many students from abroad, international students, so the majority of the students uh, are international students. <clears throat> so, uh, you have to do this during the four semesters any time or in summer as you like. And this is a good possibility also to uh, uh, gather ex experience in, the, in, in a real workspace or also to uh, prepare yourself to your later career. Many who did an internship at the company or an organization could also continue there or start their career after the after graduation. Uh, so we have a traditional thesis uh, at the end. So you write a major research, you do a re major research project and write about uh, that a thesis which is then also the defense of the thesis is part of the final exam and the other part is then uh, oral examination on uh, preset uh, topics. Uh, further opportunities, I wrote here Erasmus, though unfortunately it's a question mark nowadays at Corvinus, but we have a very strong uh, TDK, so Students Research Conference movement, uh, which is a good possibility to start uh, stepping into research. So write a research paper, present it and get uh, plenty of feedback of that. And uh, 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 this is also partly supported with the so-called new program of national excellence, which is a scholarship research frame. Uh, we have also at the department uh, teaching assistance position, so you can apply and be part of the life of the department, helping professors, assisting them in teaching and other uh, tasks. And what is a very strong uh, point for this program or the argument for entering this program is the possibility to continue in a, on a PhD level as Corvinus uh, uniquely has a communication and media PhD program. So uh, the master's is also leading towards this program, is also a precondition 
for the PhD program, but you can remain and apply and remain uh, in the PhD and probably enter the uh, research and academic life later on with this title. So, uh, program is quite well uh, uh, referred in rankings and uh, we have uh, 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 certainly <laughs> excellent teaching st stuff and uh, a practice oriented uh, courses, so it's not only theory, but uh, we have even a studio and uh, the new campus, uh, even a newer one will be open so soon. So, and probably most of you are aware that with uh, communication and media, high communication and media skills, you can easily find a job, even a well-paid job. Uh, and uh, certainly you can have an influence on uh, the future of our globe too, as communication and media are here the key issues how to, uh, how to uh, uh, form, uh, reform uh, or future. So this is, thank you for your attention. This is my uh, last uh, slide with some links uh, uh, about the program webpage at the Corvinus University and the department webpage. And the department is also uh, uh, supporting or or, or editing a, a Facebook and Instagram page so you can follow us and inform yourself about the life and the events of the uh, department. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much, Antal, for yeah, the so... Uh, overview. Um, as I can see, we only have just a handful of uh, viewers left. So I dare say we uh, cannot expect any more questions, uh, but uh, in the future, if we will have uh, questions over the comment sections or we receive uh, any written ones in uh, email or other platforms, we will make sure to forward them um, and you can uh, answer and reply to them afterwards according to your expertise so um i would like to uh, mm -hmm. call it a day Certainly, and, yes. uh, and uh, thank you so much for uh, finishing off uh with the communication and media science thank you very uh, much masters. for this possibility. thank you so much so uh for those uh being here uh once again Thank you so much for participating and please make sure to follow our social media sites for the most up-to-date information on the admis admission procedure, all the information concerning uh, our programs and uh, to visit our website for the detailed information on uh, any topics that you would be interested in, either uh, should it be the university itself or uh, any programs that we offer on masters or bachelors so you can find any information uh, you would need on the digital uh, platforms so thank you so much once again and uh, see you uh, next week on the bachelor's online open day that we will have uh, in mind for the next week. And uh, have a good night, everyone.